Hello fellow homebrewers, JP here, and I want to introduce to you the brand new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Series available at More Beer. More Beer sells the highest standard in homebrewing equipment, and the Brewbuilt Conicals are just that. They're made from mere polished 304 stainless steel, and they come with loads of features that you and I have been looking for. They have a full 2-inch bottom dump valve, which will eliminate your clogging issues, while the sturdy base includes four reinforced legs, just like those big pro tanks do. More Beer also carries the Brewbuilt line of options and add ons like casters, pressure kits, and even external glycol chillers. So you can find out more about the new Brew Built X1 Conical Uni Tanks by going over to morebeer.com for detailed videos on the entire line of Brew Built Conicals. You can trust Brew Built with your next fermentation, and you can trust More Beer to find the right conical for you. Brew Built at morebeer.com. Feels like work. Shooting the shit for two hours, drinking beer and talking beer. What a wonderful experience. Can we not have the barf bucket near my mixing board? <laughs> I think everybody could read the book. I knew you were going to use this book as an excuse to quit doing this show. <laughs> Mrs. Buff, if you want, I can mail you the bub timer. Yeah, Newcastle. Especially in the can. Have you ever had it in the can? <laughs> no, I have not had it in the can. <laughs> I closed my eyes and I concentrated really hard. Now, live from the Brewing Network Studios in Northern California, this is the radio program for home brewers, craft brewers, beer lovers, and beer geeks. It's your only source for live beer radio that brings expert brewers together with well, expert drinkers. This is the radio program with a head on it. This is The Session. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Session. Thanks so much for joining us. Happy to be here. My studio is not as happy to be here today. Studio's falling apart before my eyes. That's a new thing. Much like my life. <laughs> the, just close your eyes. Do you, <laughs> does that work? Yeah. That sounds like what I do with my life, too. Just bury my head. <laughs> just wait for things to go away. Most of the time, they do. It does work for me, usually. Yeah. I don't know. Cameras. Until you close your eyes one last time. <laughs> the, the final close. <laughs> You're right. You know, everyone's yeah, just... it's such a relief. <laughs> the final close? <laughs> the final close. You also can't wait? It's amazing. <laughs> I knew I liked you, Teresa. Uh, once again, joining us uh, as our, our newest co-host, uh, Teresa is on the on the show with us. Uh, thanks for coming down. Of course. All the way from Auburn. pleasure, yes. Crooked Lane Brewing Company, of course. Um, and today on the program, we're going to be speaking to Solid Ground Brewing Company from Diamond Springs, California. They brought us some beer in. So we're going to uh, taste with them. If you want to come down to the Hop Grenade, you can. we got their beer on tap here also. And uh, we'll be having a good time um, with them today. Uh, thanks to our sponsor, More Beer. It's not their fault that our studio is falling apart. They do a great job supporting us. Uh, so thanks to them. You can go to morebeer.com and check them out. And thank them for being a longtime sponsor of the session, keeping us alive here. Maybe they should get into recording equipment. Sales. Right. Yeah. So we can get. So I can just ask for more free shit. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then give it away at our anniversary fest. Yeah. 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 That's not a bad idea. Yeah, I don't know. Five years of this equipment, though. You know, I kind of pieced it together in the beginning mm. anyway, and um, it's just starting to show its age. Nothing lasts forever. <laughs> That's Bodies. Right. Yeah. Hairlines. Yeah. All sorts of things. You're the only one not starting to show your age, Beardy. I'm sick of you. <laughs> yeah, um, he is timeless. Right? <laughs> Tired timeless. of him. Timeless. I'm aging underneath the beard. Right, that's it's true. All going to shit. Yeah, right yeah. Under, under the, yeah. The, he's got the he's got the waddle. Oh yeah, the, like the little thing. Right, that that's hangs why. down from your chin. Yeah. Whatever you call that thing. <laughs> that's why yeah. my beard is getting longer. I have to keep hiding it. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Be down to your ankles soon. Yeah. Uh, hey, just quick question: Are you are you going? Do you plan on going to the homebrewers conferences here, Beardy? I think I've asked you this. Uh, Probably not, huh? I don't currently have plans. If you need me to have plans. I don't know. Bevo and I are trying to figure that out still, but I don't know. It's expensive to go out there this year. Yeah, it's all the way in Rhode Island. Yeah. Yeah, like no direct flights and... 
Really? It's yeah. going to be a hot mess. Yeah. I'm looking wow. forward to it. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be fun. I can't wait for the conference. I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> you could drive the bunker directly. Oh, you know what? I kind of thought about it, actually. The bunker would oh, make yeah. it. Well, the engine would make it. <laughs> right. Um, you would have a drivetrain. That's the name for your motorhome is the bunker? That is, that's one of her names, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she when she's yeah. uh, behaving well or not. So well, well, Maybelline is her real name. Oh, Maybelline. Yeah, <laughs> or Mabel. I'm sorry. Uh, what? Maybelline. Yeah. yeah, she told me on the last uh, long like, when I was living in her for a little while. It's like lipstick mm. on a pig. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybelline. She had finally yeah. revealed her true name, her true identity to me. But her brewing network moniker is the Bunker. Oh, I got love it. Maybelline. Mm. That's cute. I know. If only she was. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe she's born with it. But <laughs> Maybe she's a crap. <laughs> yeah. But she's a strong woman, and she's been holding on. But I, I, So I felt like, actually, Mabel could make it, but I don't know that I could make that whole drive. That's a track, man. True. I've done it before. I've driven from West Coast to the East Coast. You could make it. It's whether or not you'd make it back, I think. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Um, it would be a nice road trip. I, I had too much going on. Um but yeah, gosh, sometimes the location, although the East Coast listeners are going to listen to me complain right now and tell me to fuck off. Because, <laughs> yeah, when was the last time it was over there? Because they always have to travel really far to go. So it's finally on the East Coast. It ha- it was a couple years. Actually, it was in... Um, it was in uh, Philadelphia. Actually, shit. Oh, it's been Baltimore, uh, yeah. uh, 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 Grand Rapids. <laughs> That's the middle of the country. Was it in Philly? I thought... It, we had, yeah. BNA 8 was in Philly. Right, 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 right. So, actually, in the last several years, we've had to do all the traveling, now that I think about it. So, fuck think, you guys. I yeah. think it's been fairly split. No. Like, we fly there, they fly here, we all have to fly to middle America somewhere. Right. You guys should probably just make it in, like, Cancun or something, so you can all go someplace nice. Now you're Every talking. Every year. Yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to, it should be it's in hard Hawaii. to ha- haul your homebrew out to Cancun, <laughs> I can yeah. imagine. But, yeah. Uh, should be on a different limitation. Hawaiian island. Every year. Or Vegas every year. Oh, God, no. <laughs> you would die. <laughs> Wasn't you there would one? 100% die. It was before my time, before all of oh. our time. It was there, and it went much like you think it would go, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, with like people just not showing up. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know why we're talking about this right now. We're going to have Gary Glass on the phone in a minute. Oh, we are. I might as well just call him right now. Oh, yeah. Shouldn't I? What did you tell him? Like, why not? Right around now? I told him around 630, but if you want to shoot him a text, I'm sure he'd be available. I'll just call him. I mean, we already talked about him. all the topics. I know. Like, so we'll just talk to him about when it's going to be in Vegas again. Yeah, right? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Gary, we already decided. He can give us a rundown on where it's been, though, the last couple of years. That's true. If I wasn't so busy trying to fix the studio, I would have had this prepared. For... Sorry, just give me one sec. i call the man. Uh, okay. 555. 26. Just kidding. All right, let's see if we can get Gary on here. We'll just talk about this. Let's get it done. Get it ironed out. Yeah. Make travel plans. Poor guy's probably in the middle of dinner. In the history of our of all of our time with Gary, we've probably never called him early. <laughs> no, I'm always sending him texts like, sorry, we're going to be late. Oh, it's going to be completely unexpected for him. Um, yeah. See, <laughs> we're gonna, all right, I'll move on and we'll come back because uh, he's a... Wait, wait, wait. Maybe I got him. Oh, no, we got his voicemail. All right. Uh, We'll call him back in a few. Anyway, uh, NAC is coming up at the end of June there. Uh, Announcements brought to you today by Drake's Brewing Company. I'll do these announcements now. We can talk about what's happening out there. Uh, Drake's Brewing Company got their Session Beer Fest coming up on May 25th from 1 to 5. It's down in Jack London Square. You can get tickets. It's actually free to attend. Um, but if you want to drink beer, you got to pay a little bit of money. And uh, all goes to a good cause. It's the Session Beer Fest down in Jack London Square. Go to drinkdrakes.com for more information. It's a great event. And, uh, you know, you don't have to get hammered all day. It's a nice, uh, nice amount of Session beers there. Or you can. Or you can. If you put your mind to it. That's right. Yeah, you have to work a little harder than yeah. usual. Yeah. It's the kind of hard work I don't mind. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay. So, like I said, we are going out to Rhode Island, uh, Providence to be exact, and just after, at the very end, on the last day, is the finale of Homebrew Con. We've got our BNA 14. We're teamed up with More Beer and Melvin Brewing, and I was just on a call with Melvin today, talking about all the different beers we're going to be able to get out there, um, bringing a few West Coast beers with us. 
which I'm excited about. Yeah, the distributor that we're going to be working with for our event there uh, has a pretty decent list from out here. Um, oh, it's not. You're not uh, getting special order cakes. Well, I'm gonna special order. I'm gonna get stuff that the that, that the distributor usually can't get. Oh, nice. I'm sure that out there, you know, the the, the people from here like they send their pale ale and their IPA and like whatever. But sure, I'm just yeah. gonna I'm gonna call the ones that I know that are on their list and mm-hmm. go, hey, in your next shipment, you got to send something even better. Perfect for us. Um, so there's a there was a few of them on. The, I mean, Heretic is on their list. I was surprised mm-hmm. to find. So that's great. Uh, I'll be able to get something special from uh, Jamil. Yeah. Um, who else did I see on there today? Knee deep. Okay. Um, I saw Mother Earth Brewing on there. None of these are confirmed, by the way. I, I got to call them myself. But these uh, are all breweries on a list you read. Well, I was looking at them on a list, and then who we've had on the show. Oh uh, sure. So I wanted to have some of those folks out there. Um, Epic. Is uh, is on their list. Um, some of your friends from Oregon, which I can't remember their Oregon. name right now. Breakside. Breakside is on their list. Yeah. So maybe I'll have you give them a call for me. I could do that. Uh, anyway, a few people like that. So we got to have some good beer there. And no JP. JP, yeah. JP won't be there. No. Nope. So got, you're going to have a great time. He's got baby time. It's true. Yeah. Uh, so far, it's just me and Bevo, as a matter of fact. Not even Sam? It's a party. No, yeah. Sam has to earn me some money, so he can't come. Is that finalized? Like, he absolutely can? Or are we still waiting to find that out? <laughs> As of right now, we're still kind of waiting. Right. But and the longer we wait, and... the more expensive this is going to be, so it's less likely that Sam's going. Waiting, hoping, and dreaming. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. I'll always pay extra for Sam, though. He's like my guiding light, you know? He, he he keeps me alive and kills me at the same time. It's true. He does not keep you alive, and you two like together would be absolutely worthless to me. Especially if it's <laughs> just him and I. Oh, oh man, yeah. <laughs> I would just be like the. I mean, I'm already angry, but I would be more angry. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, then you'd have to drag me out there. I know. Just to what? Get worse with me and Sam. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, yes. I'm not yeah, sure the sure. three of us together are much better. <laughs> Uh, this conversation is making me angry. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you wonder why I'm not going. <laughs> uh, all right. So I got that going on for you. Um, what else can you do? You can support us by doing your Amazon shopping. That way I can, I can afford to bring Sam out. Just click the Amazon link on our homepage. It's even my microphone. Fucking up now. It really is, right? It was doing fine for, what, like a month? I didn't notice well, it, it was, Dr. Homebrew either, but... Well, it was yours at first. Well, it was which it, I seem to have fixed, and now it's mine. Yeah, but and then and then both of them were fine for at least a month or two, and then now I think it's literally I think everything's just getting dirty, like mm-hmm. dirty channels that I got to try to clean. I'm just yeah. kind of afraid if I do that, the whole board's gonna blow up. Why would it blow up? You just spray air like the compressed air in the Johns. No, once it starts doing this, you got to spray this like alcohol solution in there. Oh, well, you're good at that. <laughs> not beer. Yeah, yeah, not the beer yeah. kind. No. Not the kind I usually no. throw in there. <laughs> I, uh, I would think you would just burp and blow into it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to go on all night. I'm going to slowly get more aggressive. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> well, if you know if you know the end point, just go there now. Save some mm. time. Be pragma- pragmatic. Is that the proper word? No, no, because i got to finish the show. Yeah, uh, that's why it's better that it's a progression. I'm fine uh, right now. Which yeah, is well, good. right. But it's, you know, two and a half hour show. Wait, do you hear that? If I start now, <laughs> do you hear be, that? <laughs> it'll, it'll just get worse. You guys hear that? Fast. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should just get oh, the uh, canned air going now. Just or the a, canned uh, alcohol. The canned alcohol. I don't have any. And we'd have to shut everything down and you got to let it dry. Mm. Ah, fuck it. I just quit. Yeah, I think show's should, over. I think you should let Beardy fuck take it. care of it because talk, you guys talked about your mechanic skills. And how his are superior to they are most oh yeah everyone's because I, I, I know like he's just dying to learn more about Re- electronics and and make, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah changing oil is just like fixing a mixing board I think mm-hmm. yeah. I, plus it'll know. take him eight months because he'll have to learn like fucking Newton's law before he ever touches Gravity? a button like Beardy won't yeah <laughs> don't is, drop a screw <laughs> what is sound yeah, yeah. Beardy, that's exactly Beardy will start with the basics where's the sound plug I don't if I pull the plug out I don't want all the sound to come out so where is that so I can you stay also, away from it you could also like buy new wires but he would want to make his own so that he knew that they were done right that's oh, what I mean that's, that's what I'm saying you to go to China trust, to trust a, anybody yeah to mine the earth right for the elements that we need, I right. know. I know where good copper's found. Yeah, I'll go get it. <laughs> I think they, He's gonna have a smelter out in the back. Mm-hmm. I don't think they like to be called coppers. 
anymore. No, pigs is usually oh, gosh. oppressors. <laughs> oh, no. See what you did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, violent criminals, as I like to call them, but, you know. All right. Click the Amazon link on our homepage. It's a great way to help me fix the studio. Uh, you can just do your shopping as normal. <laughs> Which and, just came um, up. <laughs> if, we get a, if we get a larger, uh, you know. Uh, amount of shoppers this month, and maybe we, I'll replace something. Um, what else do I need to let you know? Um, subscribe and join the BN Army. That's another great way to support us. Uh, for as little as $2 a month, you're entered into the More Beer Monthly Donation Giveaway, which is worth uh, 100 bucks. You, a chance to win 100 bucks every month we do that. Um, so that's a great way to support us. And the more you donate, uh, the more uh, chances you have to win. So thanks for all of you who have been in the BN Army for so long, and those of you uh, who have just started. Also, we we love you all. Uh, also, hey, just listen to our new shows. we got great new shows. Heads and Tails um, is is somewhere on the list. Maybe will be a new show. Um, yeah. Yeah. Next uh, week, see. I think. Well, if, when you're only nine episodes in or whatever you are. Fifteen. It's, okay, it's still a new show yeah. on the BN. Let's yeah. be real. Um, Hop and Brew School uh, is a, is I'm really excited about that show. We're doing some uh, getting some great interviews on there. We just released one with uh, hops about hops and sour beer with uh, Vinny Chalurzo, Jay Goodwin, and uh, Charlie Johnson from the Ronin Fermentation Project. So it's a really good one. You can get you can get in iTunes or Google Play Store right now. Who was uh, running the soundboard for Jay's segment? For Jay's segment. Yeah. So, it wasn't Scott. It was a sour hour yeah. joke. Oh, but it Jay's wasn't a sour hour. hour. I, I know, see. Jay, yeah. I, didn't, there I was... feel like Jay can't go anywhere on the radio on this network without, without a soundboard. Right. Mm. There were no sound effects played I won't listen. from my soundboard. I refuse to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. You ever thought about that? That my soundboard's not happy that I don't play sound effects. Yeah, there? I don't maybe think that's so. what it is. Oh. Maybe it's the soundboard infecting the channels. No, because I feel like it usually breaks first on oh. the sour hour, well, and then they tell me to come fix it. Maybe that's the problem. It's the opposite. This, the yeah. soundboard is revolting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, too many sounds. Something. Um. All right. What else do I have? Go to Twitter, Facebook, and fucking Instagram. I don't care what yeah. you do. Send your feedback to feedback at thebrewingnetwork.com. Uh, we love to hear from you, and you can write us things that we'll read on the air. Maybe we'll even answer your questions. Maybe. Sometimes we don't, though. Sometimes I just ponder things on the air and never really reach a conclusion, <laughs> like I think I did last week during yeah. our entire feedback segment. Um, all right. Well, do we have a Twitter game today? Sure. I don't know who you're asking, but um, yeah. yeah. Who's ready? I have one typed out. There you go. Warren, had, Warren wins. Okay. Warren has already typed it out. So you didn't have one ready? Well, no, I have one. Oh, I just haven't typed it out. Score, if we're keeping score, it's definitely Warren's turn. So. Oh, oh right, because last yeah. week was Jason's. Okay. What, have we been taking turns now? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Just so long as nobody asked me to write a Twitter game. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, do you feel like the beer is stealing your Twitter thunder by, by participating? No, there's no thunder. I just I, If I don't have to put the effort in to do the thing, I'd rather know. Well, you, then we have to know the exact moment you're going to arrive at the studio. That's true. I can so tell I, you. Because I can plan for that if you can plan for that. Oh, yeah. No, I can tell you when I leave. Because I, I used to tell you when I leave, and you're like, I don't care. Just get here whenever you get here. And so... Oh, I would always just say, no worries. But you never yeah, used, yeah. But you never used to show up after six, really. And if it was, it would be right. like, oh, I better get the Twitter game going. But now... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's after six every, so I need to know. After six, all right. Hey, I mean, because I got a plan really for the segment. Warren could just do the whole thing. I don't really give a shit. Oh, I'm not no. like nobody needs that. I'm not like super invested in it. I mean, you know, we look. You can't know beauty without knowing ugliness. So I feel like it's time for some ugliness. All right, mm. just fuck, fuck off. <laughs> all right, Jesus Christ, just do the fucking thing and shut up about it. Twitter game is brought to you today by the 21st Amendment, who has their kickoff to summer event Uh-oh. Friday, May 17th, from six to eight. PM. It's happening at both the San Francisco Pub and the San Leandro Tap Room. You can join 21st Amendment uh, as their annual kickoff to summer is dropping watermelons off the roof, Uh-oh. setting up beer cans as pins for watermelon watermelon bowling, and raising their hands to sunny skies and ice cold beer. It's all happening Friday, May 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. You can go to 21st Amendment.com and check out more details for yourself. What's our Twitter game? Beardy. Okay. Well, Justin, I know that you consider me one of your more tech-savvy friends. Okay. Um, and so I just read about something on the internet called doxing. <laughs> I feel like I learned about this from JP, as a matter of fact. But okay. I'm like... You're Steve 2007 Zonsiak. right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. What is it again? Doxing. 
I know, but what is it? Oh. Again. <laughs> <laughs> cool. it's, it's when people scour the internet to find out personal information or at least unfavorable information about somebody to like invalidate them as a journalist or no. ruin their career as a politician. No. What do you think it is? <laughs> Doxing. Is I don't remember you, being that. It's either. when you release your personal information. So, like, if you're your online as like, yeah, Dick Swinger four twenty on Twitter, and you were saying a bunch of racist bullshit, then I would, then you can figure it out and go, oh, that's actually Justin Crosley, and here's his address and phone number. You got doxed, bro. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds close enough to me. <laughs> All right. Well, imagine my definition was what <laughs> was actually happening. Wait, what was yours again? People trying to invalidate or like discredit somebody oh, by, by like, yeah, scouring thing. the internet. Okay. Yeah. To find information about them. Yeah. Or to release information about them. Call sure. it socks. Same, same. Yeah. So I want to get out ahead of it and I would want Twitter to find out what we need to wor- be, what's out there that we need to worry about threatening our journalistic integrity. The oh. entire 14 Ooh. years. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> mostly my dumb bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Mostly JP. There you go. Well, yeah. I don't know, man. I think about that sometimes and I try not to. Yeah. Chapter um, one, <laughs> I am born. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There, I mean, I can remember things I've said that I'm just like, yes. oh God, what, did, what were you thinking? <laughs> yes. Like my uh, entire OJ Simpson fucking thing and like uh, <laughs> oh, that was great. downtown nap. No, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone let me get away with it. It's just shit like that. I, I, uh, I'm the same. I'm the exact same where you're like, what did I do? Who but, am but I? But maybe yeah. no one was yeah. listening. Your volume of material kind of helps you because right. then, like, you can't really pin down any one thing. It's yeah, just like. But you would think like uh, like James Gunn, the guy who did uh, Guardians of the Galaxy one and two, the director. Right. Mm-hmm. Then they found his ten year old tweets. <laughs> right. And he got fired. See uh, by yeah. Disney. I mean, okay. he got hired again, but you know. But yeah. then you have then you have uh, uh, major examples on the other side of the coin too, uh, like the president of the United States of fucking America, for example, mm-hmm. who has mm-hmm. like uh, I don't know how many years of Howard Stern interviews that uh, were bad enough. Right. Then uh, TV interviews that are, are literally. Uh, uh, sexual harassment in like in by, by definition, <laughs> yeah, right. right? I mean, you yeah. name it. If we're going to talk about things that could discredit a person and and potentially block them from succeeding, yeah, yeah, we're actually kind of low on the totem pole. <laughs> True, <laughs> believe so, it or not, one hundred percent. Well, because we're not millionaires. Yeah, I right. feel like that's the I feel like that's the the factor where you can either right. make it go away because that's what he did with a lot of harassment lawsuits is pay people off. Yeah, the yeah. history of paying people off. So, well, 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 maybe so, but but even, but now Twitter? we know about them again. Yeah, yeah. No and, one cares. And no one cares. Yeah. No one gives a shit. Yeah. We're all too mentally ill. No one gives a shit. No. Okay, yeah. so I guess so we just safe. need to take on a conservative political stance that's kind of. Radically uh, out there, and then maybe all this stuff will just roll off. We'll your just back. go away. Yeah, mm. Pizzagate, let's go. I okay. mean, yeah. you know, yeah. the yeah. Lita Express, and Pizzagate. I believe everything. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein is my Lord and Savior, and let's go. And then we'll be fine. It's yeah, a yeah. volume thing. There's so much going out about him, people just stop paying attention to it. If it was just right. one thing people could focus on. I see. Okay. So we Which just need that's to do more. Kind of what I was thinking mm-hmm. about is like, there's just a lot there, you know, right. like you're going to yeah. pick on this one thing, but there's, wow. Do you hear there's like a million things you can pick on? <laughs> She's a Trump apologist. I Did know. you just hear that right now? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm a, I'm a, Does she adjust Justin her red hat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That says Mahjong on it, right? <laughs> yeah. I love Mahjong, dude. <laughs> that game is fucking fun as hell. Yeah. It's a good thing the cameras are barely working today. You can't see, uh, Teresa's MAGA hat. Yeah. <laughs> Is this hat red or blue? Yeah. All right. Well, I make, like this uh, game. So make IPA hoppy again. So find out <clears throat> stuff for us that we should know ahead of time. Right. We just want to know. And what? I'd rather it be fake. For, and by add, for <laughs> just, just make shit up. Add to our anxiety. I don't want yeah. to know the real stuff. Don't don't send in. The, don't go scouring the archives for the next two hours. <laughs> oh, no. Here is the timestamp yeah. for everything you should kill yourself over. I do not need that. Um, okay. Let's do a little feedback, shall we? Yep. Feedback's brought to you today by the Beer Law Center. You can go to beerlawcenter.com. And uh, our good friend John, who takes care of my trademark, can do the same thing for you. Uh, also help you with your brewery filings, um, TTB stuff. He's a, he's a great guy, and he's good at what he does. And I was on the phone with him again today. Nice. Working on, some other, I sent you? working on some other bullshit. No, yeah. that one's hopefully easy. Yeah. I th- usually that stuff is when some fuck just is, like, selling shirts. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, every now and then it gets tricky. This one's tricky. We got a tricky one right now. Uh-oh. The whole thing. I don't like tricky. No. Um, unless it's rocking a rhyme and it's right on time. Do you That's guys, tricky. Do you guys <laughs> have to do cease and desist letters sometimes? All the time. Really? 
Uh, I tend to not start with that. Um, I mean, I, I start with a polite version of that. I guess mm-hmm. it's still a cease and desist letter. Yeah. Um, and then if it gets, usually I can handle it like that. Um, especially if it's just a person like peddling t-shirts or something. Yeah. Every now and then when a brewery thinks that they invented the hop grenade, it gets a little further. Um, and right now, so anyway, that happens a lot. Like every two months. Wow. I, I have to send something to somebody. Um, and usually, you know, John's really great at, at, at the Beer Law Center because he's he just, he advises me really well. And the, the way him and I work together is... He kind of stays out of it until he has to. Like, he gives me advice. I'll send him whichever new one is up, or he finds it sometimes. It gives me some good advice of how to just try to keep lawyers out of it. Mm -hmm. And almost every time that works. Uh, He he gives good advice, and we have a good rapport, and and that will work. And then, uh, you know, if it doesn't, then he gets involved, and and he has a great uh, track record. Um, This one I'm dealing with right now is, is tricky. And it has to do with both the name, the Hop Grenade, and the logo, the wow. Hop Grenade. And I don't, I shouldn't say much about it anymore, because this one's, this one's tricky, but John is doing a great job, and, and hopefully we'll get this one taken care of, too. I thought That's you were okay with me opening up the second location. <laughs> Third. Yeah. You, you told me that in your sleep that one time <laughs> right, when you were yeah. camping. Oh, yeah, you signed, you signed a piece of paper. This is this one is someone who thinks I'm the violator. Oh, oh my stars! <laughs> well, you wow. feel like that should be easy. <laughs> How is that I tricky? Know. I know we have fourteen years or no, mm. t- 10, 11? It's a thing. Wow. Uh, yeah. Jeez. So that oh, one. Oh man. Yeah. Just for all those people who wanted to be Justin, like think again. <laughs> <laughs> it blows most of the time. Uh, but John can help you. Go to beerlawcenter dot com. All right, we just got a little bit in feedback today. Yeah, not much. A uh, long email from, from Chris, also known as Silky Pants, apparently. Um, <laughs> oh. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe his name is Silky Pants, also <laughs> known, known as Chris. Chris. <laughs> right. uh, this is nice things about us. He says, I've been a long-time listener of all the shows on the BN, and I want to say thanks for the hookup with Swan Brewing. Uh, of course, that was uh, Crotch Rot. Our old listener just on recently. He says, I travel for work and listen to all your shows while I stare at the roads in BFE, Florida. I was driving to Lakeland, Florida, and just by chance, you had them on the session that same day. So I decided to head over there to check things out. The place is awesome. I saw the post office across the street and tried to scope out all the rowdy post office workers while sipping on straight out of Lakeland IPA. It was delicious. I asked the bartender if Crotch Rot was there. (laughs) <laughs> you should have seen the look on his face. He says. I had to clarify who I was referring to, and uh, lo and behold, uh, Christian was there on site, and I was grateful that he took time to talk to me for about 45 minutes. Yeah, that guy never shuts up sometimes. <laughs> he says, it's a great place to chill, and since I travel to that city a few times a month, I know where I'll be hanging out. I also wanted to thank JP for introducing me to the Pico Brew Zymatic. Hey, you're welcome, baby. It has really changed my finished product, and I couldn't be happier with it. For the record, I got divorced and bought myself this as a reward for dealing with all the BS the last couple of years. Good for you. Huh. He says, not only did I upgrade my rig, I also have controlled temp fermentation and a three-tap keg system. The best thing about the Pico Brew is that I can repeat any beer without worrying, and I will focus on recipes. If the finished product sucks, well, I suck then. And lastly, I owe a lot of my brewing education um, to all of you, so I decided to finally become a member of the BN Army and donate $20 a month. Hey, there we go. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Well done, Silky Pants. Seriously, he says, I think I'm a sergeant or something, but who cares? You guys are great. Thanks from Silky Pants. Well, thank you, Silky Pants. Get yourself some new silk pants while you're at it. You, treat yourself. You treat yourself. You deserve it. That's right. You get, you're trying to get grease stains out of silk, dude? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Before the break, should we try? You want to try Gary again, real quick? Um, yes. Let's see if we can get a hold of him. No, I don't want to block him. I want to call him. Um, did you text him at all? Probably not. That would be that would be producing. No, I don't have his direct line. I can't text him. Okay. I have his work phone number. Damn, bro. Got her. Damn it. All right. We'll see. We just listen to the Skype tone. Fuck it. I love it. More entertaining than I am. Well, they haven't changed it in all that time. <laughs> Mr. Gary Glass. Hello? Hello, sir. How are you? 
I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. You're on the air already. Sexy voice. Yeah. Yeah. He's getting sexy. I know. He's used to waiting. I (laughs) called you early, and I was like, he's not going to answer because in the history of our entire relationship, we've never been early. So I knew you wouldn't answer. Entirely true. (laughs) Yeah. Welcome, Gary Glass. It's nice to talk to you. Hey, it's great to talk to you. <laughs> well, I started off the show really early talking about Providence and uh, and me and Bevo flying all the way out there and, uh, and and all of this. And it just started to spark a bunch of uh, discussion about Homebrew Con, of course. So I thought I was just I'd get you on then. But that's OK. We're going to revamp the discussion now. Um, and I want to ask you, because we were trying to figure out, like, do I have to fly to the East Coast more, or does the East Coast have to fly to the West Coast to me more? And I was thinking you guys have it pretty damn even recently. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, we, we've been trying to keep it uh, keep it pretty well spaced out, be somewhere on the East Coast and then somewhere in the middle of the country and then then West Coast. So we were in Portland, Oregon last year. So now we're in uh, Providence, New England. Right. Rhode Island, yeah. <laughs> right? But it's the first time, first time in New England since 1991. Really? Where was it then? It was uh, in Manchester, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Okay, got it. Yeah. So I'm originally from Connecticut, and uh, yeah, I still don't go back there that often, but I do love some New England. Yeah. Um, and so, I, so you got an excuse to go visit some relatives. Well, let's not Whoa. let's not go overboard. They're, Do they listen to the show? Or am they, I putting you in the no? In they the don't. Spot here? They don't. But they're a pain in the ass. I'll tell you that right now. A couple of them are real ghetto too, and I know they're going to want to come to the anniversary party we always have, oh. and I'm trying to avoid that. <coughs> Flip flops. Hey, yo, this is the party. They're a little ghetto. Um, <laughs> But my dad, yeah, they're they're kind of fun. Uh, My dad, though, uh, was not ghetto, and he used to take me to Providence when I was a kid. Uh, It's a cool place to go. Like he used to take me for lobster and uh, all kinds of good stuff out there. It it really is a cool place. I'm excited. I've I've actually been there three times, but I've never been there for more than twenty four hours. So. Um, I'm really excited to be there for a week. Yeah, it, you, you should be. It's a, it's such a cool place, and you picked a good time of year to do it, obviously. Well, I know that thing's always in June. but um, And, hey, did I see something about, are you still doing early bird tickets to HomebrewCon? Uh, the early bird pricing ended last week. It did? I thought I saw some random yeah. email about extending it. Maybe it was a random email that well, said, hurry up and do it now. We did extend it, we did extend it for, a, for a day because our, our email service hosed us, and we couldn't get the message out to last chance to register at early registration pricing. Got it. But uh, the, the, the price change is only $35, so it's, oh, it's not really bad. not that not that big a deal. No, and I did warn totally, everybody last totally week worth too. It. It's still underpriced to you know two hundred and ninety for a, for a full conference registration. Yeah, that's a killer deal. Um, I warned everybody last week too, so it's their fault. But yeah, thirty five more bucks. <laughs> that's nothing. That's fine. I'm gonna spend that in beer somewhere, probably at my party. Um, okay, so tell me, what are you most excited about besides uh, besides getting to hang out in Rhode Island this year? Uh, I'm excited about the lineup of speakers we've got. Uh, we've got 68 educational sessions going on this uh, this year, and it's just a really killer lineup of a, a, a wide range of different topics, um, covering a, a whole bunch of stuff. I'm I have to, I have a master's degree in history, and so I'm I'm kind of excited that we've got like five different historical talks. Oh, that's super um, cool. Yeah, yeah. Ron Pattinson is coming. He's Oh, yeah. Tell us everything that we we think about Scottish Ale is wrong. What about uh, mm-hmm. what about Barclay Perkins? Is, is that was his uh, yeah, blog? Sh- sh- shut up about Barclay. Perkins. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. First of all, rude. <laughs> and, well, there's that. Yeah, but the guy knows his shit, man. Yeah. That's great. Also, the East uh, Coast. I mean, New England's a perfect place for a bunch of historical uh, yeah, uh, content yeah. too, isn't it? So uh, that's nice. We have we have the the. Um, uh, the, the the beer historian from the Smithsonian is giving a presentation. Wow. Teresa McCullough. <laughs> That's she's awesome. awesome. She did a she did a when, a, when we were doing an online present called Zymergy Live. She did a presentation. It was it was killer. Super super cool stuff that I had no idea about. So That's very cool. And but then there's there's you know tons of stuff about actually brewing beer and you know some 
uh, I, I don't know. I'm really excited about this presentation on diastaticus. Oh. oh my gosh. Okay, that, I'm not excited about that. Yeah, but I'm sure that the home our, our homebrew <laughs> nerd listeners are super <laughs> excited about yeah. that. Yeah. Does it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those. It's one of those uh, bacteria or yeast that if you get in the brewery, it can persist and it's really like dries out all your beer. It's like oh. something that professional brewers worry about getting mixed in with their yeast. You want me to go record this one for you, Teresa? Um, yeah, I, I actually I would love for you guys to record all these and post them online. I think Gary Facebook. does. Don't you guys record them now and post them? I do. Yes, yeah. we, we oh, record with all your, of them. With we your homebrews association, members of the American Homebrews Association after Excellent. the conference. I'm still an AHA member, so I can, uh, oh, I can tap into that. You got it. Yeah, <laughs> check out check out our website. We've got like hundreds of presentations from. We don't have one on diastaticus yet, but we will. But you're about to. Yeah, <laughs> that's very nice. <laughs> I read, too, that you guys are, because not everybody uh, is in love with the award ceremony like I am, that you guys are going to run seminars this year. Uh, so you can just, people can go watch my broadcast later if they don't want to go hang out at the award ceremony and still get some education on Saturday. That That's true. And we, we actually have done that the last two years. Oh, where okay. We had simultaneously had, a, had a, just a couple of, of uh, seminars going on. Um, I was impressed with the attendance of the award ceremony this past year, though. So, Me too. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was great. I mean, it, you're, you're getting to see like the best brewers in the world take take medals. There's yeah. there's more entries in the national homebrew competition than any other <laughs> beer competition anywhere. Wow, I didn't know that. I, th- I so you're saying there's more than at GABF? Yeah, I didn't wow. know that. That's wow. crazy. Yeah, we had over nine thousand entries this year. We had we had to overtake GABF this year. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, Great American Beer Festival actually had more entries than we had earlier in the year uh, for national homebrew competition. But now we've got more entries than them. And uh, do you have all the same categories and like similar we, similar? Things? We use yeah, we use the we use the BJSP. Uh, style guidelines mm-hmm. and great america beer festival uses the brewers association guidelines okay and now that you guys are charging as much as gabf entries you guys must be rolling in the cash oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine those poor home 16 brewers? bucks would, for an entry is not that much they would really <laughs> i agree yeah do you know how much it is to enter gabf <laughs> it's uh you probably don't want to know yeah don't even say it I yeah i just know. <laughs> Don't even it's gonna say make it. all of us sad. Yeah, it's sixteen bucks for all the work that these folks have to do to oh, judge that beer. Totally well, there's a cap, I feel right? like you guys you are undercharging. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. that's true. We're totally. We're, we, got, we put on thirteen regional judge centers plus the final round, which is taking place in a convention center, which is not cheap. Right. Uh, so I mean, we try and keep it as as affordable as possible. I know you do. This is actually we we raised the price. By two bucks this year, you know, it's the first time in ten years that we've actually oh raised the gosh. price for, wow. for the competition. <laughs> See. And we had more more entrants than we've ever had. Oh, you should have raised it by four bucks. <laughs> <laughs> There's always next year. You're quite the capitalist. I know. <laughs> this is why. That's why I'm not on the board anymore, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> or it's why I should be. You, you chose not to run. That's why you aren't on the board anymore. I know. I did you a favor. Trust me. Things only things have only gone downhill since then. <laughs> uh, well, I'm excited. Everyone, of course, you can go to homebrewcon.org and get all the information that you need. There's there's hotel information on there. You can get your tickets. Uh, the speakers are up there. Um, you can even go to a page that shows the external events where you'll find our BNA 14 party that's happening on Saturday and lots of other things that are going on around town because uh, it's not just the conference. Although folks like me spend most of the time at the conference. It's just a lot of fun. You've got a social event happening every single night. Uh, it's kind of pointless to leave. Um, until Saturday, which they've kind of, you guys have changed that format in recent years so that people could spend Saturday afternoon and evening around town, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we used to do the the awards dinner that night, but we'd only have about a third of the attendees coming to that. So we really wanted to finish off the, the event with, a, with, with something that everybody could attend. So we call it the knockout party, and we'll have beer, and uh, we have... Um, Food that's that's uh, uh, curated by our, um, our our the Brewers Association's uh, head chef Adam Dooley. 
It's always fabulous. Very nice. Um, but it's it's a great time. We give away a bunch of stuff. We give away tickets to uh, to Great American Beer Festival as well as to next year's Homebrew Con. Yeah, I like the format now. I like the knockout party format. It's just a little more casual, and you get to go kind of party. You put a bunch of the of the homebrew out that, that was in the competition. Yeah. Um, you get to kind of taste beer, see everybody for you know for the last time, and then and then go to the brewing network party, basically. Yeah, and then yeah, it's, it's super fun and <laughs> get drunk and, and try to knock Matt Bowling's on stage instead of me. <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. Your your stage work is done at that point. Yeah, I like it. All right, folks. Well, go to homebrew uh, homebrewcon dot org. Get your tickets before they sell out. Get your hotel rooms. That's always the first thing I go oh, yeah, grab for sure. is mm-hmm. a hotel room. Yeah, uh, just to make sure. Uh, although Providence is a pretty pretty small place, you'll be close no matter what. Um, and it'll be a good time, right? Yeah, for sure. And and yeah, you're you're absolutely right. The, the hotels are all right around the in the downtown area, right around the convention center. Unlike last year, uh, so. Uh, easy walking distance and then being right downtown providence there's there's a whole bunch of there's breweries beer bars uh and really really excellent restaurants okay great yeah great seafood if you're into that sort of thing i love i love seeing food (laughs) all right gary glass well let us know how we can help and i'm looking forward to seeing you out there uh in june yeah (laughs) i'm i'm super excited Although I miss seeing you at the Hop Grenade in Colorado, you know we don't we, I, we don't touch base enough, you and me. I, I stopped by and you weren't there yet. Oh, you're kidding! Oh, and I wasn't nope. I wasn't there yet. You what would you do? Go on the way? No. Or you finish your 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 bouncer dude, dude wouldn't wouldn't let me in. Oh my god, you're kidding me right now. <laughs> <laughs> this did not happen. Well, you you had a special event going on. I just wanted to beer and some lunch and they wouldn't let you in did you say do you know who i am <laughs> <laughs> no i didn't i don't pull that card and you asked for me and i wasn't there i did you weren't there yeah oh man i'm sorry that sucks uh, i didn't know that <laughs> you should have texted me i was probably just out in the back trying to avoid work or something <laughs> yeah i don't know but i was just really hungry and I'm like well i'm not getting food here so <laughs> okay well that's true yeah we did have that special event well wait can i tell everybody what you were doing that morning sure didn't you go to take uh, another level of your bjcp exam yeah, yeah. I was taking the, uh, I was retaking the tasting exam uh, in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Okay, which is between Longmont, Colorado, where I live, and uh, Fort Collins, <laughs> where the Hop Grenade is. So it, you know, seemed convenient. Yeah, but you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and so if you're taking, are you BJCP certified already? Yes. Okay. So what does I, retaking? I, I took the exam back in 2006. I thought so. Okay. Have been avoiding retaking it ever since. Oh, it's like a <laughs> well, it's like a refresher course. Yeah, why do you have to retake it? Well, I'm trying to get my get get up to the next level. Okay, in my ranking. That's what I thought. That's what I figured you were doing. Okay, how do you how do you think it went? Uh, you know, I at first I thought I did pretty well, but then I, now I'm second guessing myself. No, oh, no, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. You probably did fine. You probably did. have. You, have you been practicing? Oh, uh, I, I judge it a lot. Yeah, and I, I have been practicing. Actually, I was studying up on the on the style guidelines so, for okay. weeks. Right. It's fun. Yeah, it is fun. I'm sure. I don't know. I've never no, done it. But. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I, I, as much as I dislike taking that exam, uh, I, and actually the tasting exam is really pretty, you know, it's that's that's not that painful. Okay. Uh, the, the written exam is is really hard. Yes. Uh, but the BJSB is a, is a great organization, and I totally support what they do. And of so course, they, and they and they harass like the the upper management people harass me every time they see me about my rank. So, <laughs> so you're just trying to get them off your back. <laughs> I heard they were, I heard they're raising the fees two bucks though. <laughs> uh, it's not enough. You don't, you don't get any credit for putting on this giant Humber's event. Just be like, hey, you can't just walk in I, there. I think I've got it covered, man. I'm like, 
That's a, I did my yeah, part. You know, I feel like I should, but I'm an honorary grandmaster. <laughs> right. Ten. I mean, let's be real. That's a fair question. Like, there should be an honorary level, and 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 not even a worthless one. Like one that goes the guys around beer, talking beer, working beer, tasting yeah. beer, yeah, every day, all day. It's like they do that for celebrities at universities. They give them a right, you know, what honorary doctorate. And those celebrities aren't even as handsome as Gary Glass. So. Yeah. Just stop know. that. Do you know who I am? Well, who do we need to talk to you about this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should start a petition. I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll take care of this for you, Gary. You don't worry. I'm going to start a campaign. I'll be your campaign manager. Things are going to go great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. This is, this is great. You'll drown in scandal. <laughs> yeah. 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 Be like, that Gary guy is great, but did you see this about his campaign? Oh, yeah. It'll be, there'll be a whole, there'll be a, a report. <laughs> okay. It'll get ugly. All right, Gary. Uh, it's always great to talk to you, and I look forward to seeing you soon, brother. Yeah. Great to, great to talk to you, too, and uh, looking forward to seeing you in Providence. Yes, sir. HomebrewCon.org, everybody. Go get your tickets. We'll see you there. Thanks, Gary. Take care. Yeah, thank you. All right. There you go. <laughs> great, great talking to you, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody. Me, I know, but like sometimes you know, people you should go. Yeah, he's like reading <laughs> something like, or like mm-hmm. making tea and just got kind of distracted. It was a distracted voice more than anything. But, right? Yeah, uh, he's like, probably yeah. he's probably checking his email. Is there anyone else who registered? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we got the boys from Solid Ground Brewing Company on the program with us. So hang in there. It's the Thanks. session. We'll be right back. from Cigar City Brewing, and you're listening to the session on the Brewing Network. All right, welcome back to the show. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Thanks to Gary Glass from the American Home Brewers Association. You can sign up for your membership on thebrewingnetwork.com. Just click the AHA link if you haven't done so already. We get a little cut of the action, and you get an awesome membership. And then you can go buy your tickets to HomebrewCon. Go to homebrewcon.org. All right. As promised, we've got Solid Ground Brewing in the studio with us from Diamond Springs, California. We're joined by Scott Johnson and Casey Sayre. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the studio. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Where is where is Diamond Springs? Middle nowhere. <laughs> is it like Sacramento-ish? So we're Placerville, so okay, beautiful okay. Placerville, California. So we're about, a, you know, we're 50 minutes with six, you know, ha- an hour, in a, you know, from Tahoe, okay, right next oh, to Placerville. So we are five minutes from Placerville, downtown proper. So we are so, yeah. so right like off Sierra Foothills, we're Sierra Foothills, off the fifty, right off the fifty. So, okay, okay. so we're five minutes off the fifty. Yeah, but Sac Beer Week, we say that we're uh, Sacramento. But when it's not that good week, we're, uh, we're Foothill Yokel. Convenient. Good call. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I every, like that. Everybody's from SF during SF Beer Week, too, aren't they? So <laughs> yeah. it's the same difference. Uh, you guys lived there for a while, and, and that's why you chose it? Or was it kind of a destination? A little bit of every. Well, we're both Auburn Auburn boys, more okay. or less. So okay. we're Foothill boys. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, for me, Foothill much, boys. <laughs> yeah, I spent a lot of time, you know, out of state and overseas, and you know, they always say you can't come home, but we went home. Okay. And then, uh, and then, you know, I've got kids in the area, and uh, I was doing a whole different career at the time. So when. We mean by kids in the area? They're just like running around right now. Oh, I don't know their <laughs> names or I mean, where they live. I've but heard about them. Yeah. Yeah. I figure they'll find me when they're ready. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much. I mean, the nature of the game, man. We just um, we got a little bit lazy in the sense that you know we wanted to to buffer ourselves a little bit from you know the, the market correction in the future. We wanted but, a good brewery. Yeah, one near us. Yeah, and, we, and one that we could actually own. You so know? and wait to find that just a little bit more too. I see where you're going. But when you say you're a little insulated from the market correction, the, in other words, being like a local brewery. Well, yeah. I mean, everybody says locals, you know, the thing, right? And yeah, so uh, yeah. beer is no different. I mean, it's pretty much the quintessential local, mm-hmm. right? Is, is beer. So so we built a regional brewery as a local brewery. Though. Did you, oh, is it a big brewery <laughs> that you built? Well, it's a thir- thirty barrel brew house. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's big, man. It's a nine thousand square foot building, barrel room, and. The whole nine yards, man, and then you, know, you look around, and there's you know there's an Ace Hardware. Well, it was an old Ace Hardware, okay. But uh, next door is like a you know an old you know kind of Gold Rush era hotel, 
Nice. And across the street's an old dude that yells at us when we you know have garbage going to his into his front lawn, <laughs> man. Like it's it's not it's a production brewery. But okay. It's just not in your traditional locale. But okay, so I get that then. But obviously, your your the market for your beer is is farther than. I mean, we're, we have it here at the Hop Grenade, which is... Yeah, we you get know, down to San Jose. We're, we have, you know, three three full-time salespeople and, a, you know, delivery drivers. So we're self-distributed. We have a little bit of distribution, too. So we're doing the whole thing. Wow. So You're self-distributing down to San Jose? Yeah, we're masochists. Wow, you are. No kidding. <laughs> How long have you guys been open? Uh, two years now. So our, our first... Our, Second year anniversary is on the first. You didn't give that shit up yet? You're still, someone's still driving that truck? Yeah. To San Jose. I, yeah, I was doing it for a while. Were you? Yeah, for the first year. <laughs> okay, so someone gave it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, all right. Well, self-distribution, though, we were just talking to a brewer recently about that. It's a, it's a great model, but that that's just a, that's a track. So. It's a ti- it has a timeline, I feel like, too. It's a good model, but it, there's a there's a finite amount of time <laughs> that, yeah. that, that can even Well, it's just like anything just else, happen, man. Right? It's like if you want to you know, put a pool in the backyard, you can pay somebody or you can dig the damn thing yourself, right? Right. Like, digging it yourself yeah. sucks. Yes, it does. But, uh, yeah. but, you know, with the distribution model, you know, we you save 30%, but then you got... You know, delivery vehicles, mm-hmm. delivery drivers. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, maintenance. Yeah, maintenance. Yes. Man. Yeah, I mean, the first yeah. time we went to take our our little sprinter out, man, we we overheated the damn thing like four times because you, <laughs> you overfilled it. Oh, yeah. it just, I don't know what the hell the problem was, but we were sent, <laughs> we we still sent the guy on the road. You know, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Turns yeah. out just, you need coolant. Yeah, mm, so right. we learned that lesson, and uh, yeah, everything's fine. No, guys figured it's, it out. It's good though. We can still we 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 pick and choose down here, so we kind of piecemeal it, and and I think we don't want to go too crazy down here. It's more just targeting the key accounts and doing okay. it monthly. And it works really well. Great. It actually works better than trying to be a big presence. But yeah, yeah. So, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, Casey, so you're you're the head brewer. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And you got quite a bit of brewing education. Uh, where'd you go to school? So I went to Harry Watt. Um, so basically... Uh, Gross. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Harry Watt, if, if, if you don't know it, it's right. It's it's the only brewing school, really, um, that's a full credentialed university where you get a full four- or five-year degree okay. that speaks English. So okay. that was pretty much the, the fact. Where is it? Right? So it's in Scotland. It's in All right. Edinburgh. All right. So it's, uh, it's... Almost English, then. Yeah, it's, uh, it's brewing and distilling science, right? So... It's real heavy on Scotch whiskey, you know. And my first internships were all Scotch producers, okay. You know, but um, you know Charlie Bamforth, you know, out of Davis, obviously was uh, had a big influence on the university mm-hmm. at the time. Him and Graham Stewart, who ran the program, were were, were besties. Nice. You know, they they did all the geeked out on their goalies. You okay. know, their okay. English Premier League goalie. You know, yeah, yeah. That Charlie does. He's crazy about yeah. it. Yeah, and then um, but pretty much I had a couple choices, right? You could you go to Davis, mm-hmm. and at the time this was. I mean, I graduated probably 20, 20 years ago okay. now, okay. Know, out of the program. So, you know, you could go to Davis, which wasn't as established as it is now. You could go to Weinstefan, which you had to speak German. Mm. Um, you could go to Berlin. You know, you could go to Siebel, but the short courses. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. but uh, I just didn't really want to compete with, with the Davis guys. And I needed a full degree because I needed to be able to transition into other industries if we had to. Okay. So, you know, my wife, you know, was, uh, was kind enough to, to work retail in Edinburgh you know, while I uh, nice. pretty much drank and brewed at the university and played PlayStation and studied <laughs> all that crap. Right, right. The, right. the quintessential student, you know, in, um, in a brewing school. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. Like it's, it's even worse when yeah. you're in a brewing school. I oh, would imagine. Sounds, sounds amazing. It yeah. does sound amazing, but hard to go to class. Yeah, real hard. I mean, um, you know, luckily, like I said, that program, you know, was a uh, it was well established. It was um it was a high tier program and it, um, it allowed me to get my, I mean, my first brewing job post degree was Budweiser and I couldn't have had that job had I not gone to that university program. So we, we have guys all the time that come in to intern with us and they always want to go do these short courses and spend, you know, 10, 20, 30 grand wow. on brewing programs. And it's, you know, for me, it made sense because I was going big boy, right? You know, I went to Budweiser, left Budweiser, went to work for Dan at Gordon Beerish right afterwards when I got tired of being the the American all the time. Okay. You know, in the in the UK and came back and, and it was, again, that same degree got me the job at Gordon Beerish because Dan, obviously being from Weinstefan, yep. you know, valued that kind of degree. So you, when you say big brewery, you're just talking about like more of a, a production focused, high quality, quality consistencies, everything. That was your resume at that point. Oh, 100%. I mean, okay. um, you know, Budweiser, uh, to be fair, as a brewer, 
the majority of the work I did was sit behind a desk and stare at a computer. Okay. And uh, there was three of us, and we all took time, you know, took turns napping. Wow. Literally napping. <laughs> yeah. You didn't need three people recording all the data off the computer. So <laughs> two guys would put their feet up and go to sleep, and the other guy would, you know, track and, and, and load up hops. Yeah. Wow. So it was a, you know, it was a large brew house. Where was this Budweiser at? This was in, in London. In London, okay. Yeah, so which is now apartment buildings. They, uh, they've since That's cool. sold out. Man. I, so, I want to live there. Yeah, when it was all British Union dudes, too, which was really fun because they were all, uh, they were, they'd, they'd just been bought out by Budweiser. They were all union, mm. you know, and so you got these big burly dudes carrying stuff around, like big, like 50 to 80 pound pipes back and forth across the building doing nothing wow right, they're just walking back <laughs> looking and forth, busy man, they look busy oh my gosh but uh but at the end of the day man that that's we've taken a lot of those lessons from budweiser and we incorporate them at our place sure right? i mean same with dan i mean um gordon Biersch learned probably more about brewing per se than i did at university or at budweiser I bet. budweiser was great about you know lab you know lab work and consistency and hitting numbers you know, but you did one thing. You were in the brew house. He's okay. still obsessed about hitting numbers, though. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you still get to take naps? You got hammered into yeah. him. No, on the no brew naps, naps, yeah. But I, I would get those phone calls asking how long it took to grain out the louder 10 because they needed to save 30 seconds. Wow. Okay. You know, per brew. Because at the end of a year, every thirty those 30 seconds had a dollar value. Yeah, and the yeah. bonuses for the management was based on that lost time of you know, brewing production. We had a two-hour clock that counted down. Every two hours, it mashed in whether you're ready or not, unless you stopped it. Wow! If you stopped oh, it, wow. and once you stopped it, you had to log why you stopped it, and that came off the off the bonus program. So, Ouch! I never yeah. thought of that, but you're right. Thirty seconds at a time, all day, every yeah, day. Twelve brews a day. That matters. Okay. Yeah, so, wow. But yeah. Dan was a little more. Let's talk about the beer focused because his is a pretty automated brewery too, but nothing like that. It is, but at Gordon Beers, though, as a brewer, you you brewed all. It was all the work production. Mm-hmm. It was all the the cellar work. You know, all the um, you know transferring tanks, filtration. You know, packaging, getting. Getting you know the, the pasteurizer you know ready to go, getting the bottom line set up. You, you did every single part of the job. Okay, got it. You know, whereas the Budweiser again, you're very compartmentalized. Yep. Okay. You know, so, but but they all had value. Yeah. You know, and again, the same thing at our place. On a limited budget, we do the best we can to imply or to take all those principles and apply them to what we're doing. Okay. You know, it doesn't always work, but you know. <laughs> well, let's talk about that I, before I, we got your half in our glass that I want to try right now. Um, but first, just quickly. Uh, I love Dan. I don't think I could ever fucking work for the guy. Like, how was that? <laughs> well, I was back in the, the kind of the glory period, right? Okay. Like the, the time when like it was fun. Okay. Okay. Back okay. before, before all the stress of yeah, you know, yeah. was getting to him, man, it was, it was fun. Yeah. I mean, um, he was, he, I mean, there's nobody better at German brewing than Dan. What, love or hate the Gordon Beer Spears at times, you know, um, the guy's got an IQ of like 170. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a very good. You know, brewer and a great guy. He's a great. That's why I say yeah. I really do like him. He's a great guy. I yeah. just I don't think I'm anal enough uh-huh. to work for him. Oh, yeah. Well, he, his office was on the other side of the building, man. So there like, you go. Really yeah. See him that often. Yeah, so. yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, well, in our glass uh, we have your uh, Hefeweizen. Uh, is, is, do you just call it your half fights, or does it have like fancy names? It's Weizen Vi- okay. or Weizen. They're cloudy. They're Weizen. hazy. Everything's Weizen. named They're after hazy, ground. Yeah. Everything's ground named after ground based things. So okay, okay, makes, makes naming things a little easier that way. All right, I got so you. This is the, what is it? The, the um, dirty half of Weizen. <laughs> well, yeah, the Weizen. I mean, the term Weizen isn't like W E I S N, right? Is the is kind of the originating area of Hefeweizen. Mm. So it sounds like oh. Weizen with a Z, but it's with an oh. S. So, so the, the W. I the see. W. Well, yeah, with W S, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, but you know, the spears. Um, I mean, it's again, Dan always made a really good half of Weizen mm-hmm. at GB, right? And this is kind of based off that. To be honest, it's a, it's a four step mash on this. So it's a this God you know, damn. Gets, the, yeah, gets the whole thing, man. <laughs> that brings yeah. it brings it home to the brew house. So we have uh-huh. a you know a mash mash ton, lauder lauder ton, and then we have room for we have one kettle, and then we're over ambitious having room for another kettle. So we have a. We have a four vessel system eventually. Hmm. So anyway, well, that makes it a little what, easier, I guess, right? Four well, yeah. Step. Well, I mean, yeah. The, the, yeah. I mean, a dedicated mash mixer is, is makes all the difference in the world, right? Yeah. I mean, you couldn't do that in a, in a mash louder combo. Well, I know that. I yeah. Mean, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's um, and to be honest, this is even how we would normally make a hef. I mean, this one's a little bit heavier than than the hef that I would personally it, normally make. It's got some some balls to it, I guess. Yeah. So heft, maybe uh, heft, some heft. Some heft yeah. whites in. Mm. There you go. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of that's due to just the slightly higher ABV than a traditional hef. And normally I would take this beer and filter half of it and blend it back to reduce some of that yeast load that would kind of lighten the body a little bit. Oh, well, okay. wow. but, um, but again, being on, you know, two owners in a, 
in a uh, establishment that you know we've we bought the damn building and all the equipment and have a big bank loan. Yeah, you know, we, we can only do so much on the filtration side. We don't have a big gotta, fancy filtration. I don't system. think anyone was going to notice, but you. Yeah. You got to so, yeah. yeah. okay. shave those thirty seconds. Dude. Yeah. Oh. You might be. Uh, you might be aware that. The consumer is okay with hazy beers at this point, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, it's um, it's a real, I mean, old school German technique though to take half of it and centrifuge half or or whatever, and then blend it back. So you take the unfiltered portion and the um, centrifuge slash filtered portion and blend it back, and you get a little bit more stable hef. Okay. You know, and it's and it lightens it up a little bit. If you've had those German hefs that they, they don't have a, they're not heavy. Mm-hmm. Right, and so um, and that's something we would change with this one. But for all intents and purposes, I mean, it's it's an underpitched beer. You know, this is under four step mash. It's it's dramatically underpitched, like an eighty percent underpitch to stress so out the yeast. Four steps, you're saying a uh, four temperature rest. Yeah, so this starts at one one twelve, and it goes up to I think one thirty six, then one fifty four, then one sixty eight. What so, is the one thirty six rest doing um, for it's you? Kinda, it's kind of the modern. It's a modern protein rest, right? So I mean, mm. you know, the old school protein rest is always in those low one twenties, right? right? And the, but you always have the potential in those low one twenties to, to to do a little bit of damage, you know, as opposed to all doing all good. Hmm. Kind of um, being in between an acid rest and a protein rest. Yeah, you can you can eat up your head retention in your body at the, in the low one twenties. It's mm-hmm. great for free amino nitrogen formation. You know, okay. actually trying to get some some FAN into the beer if you have fermentation issues in terms of fermentation stalling yeah. and such. But um, but it's not actually that great at building body and head retention. So the one thirty six to one thirty eight rest we use on all of our loggers too, and our loggers will start at like fifteen Plato. And finish at, um, I'm sorry, 12 and a half Play-Doh and finish right around three Play-Doh. So like, you know, 10, 12 specific gravity, but they taste like they're 10, 18, 10, 20 because hmm. they have a ton of body to the point. Sometimes we have to throttle that back. I see. You know? hmm. So it's, it's, you know, again, it's not great for FAN formation, but it's great for, for body and head retention. Our, our Pilsner has head retention for days. Wow. You know, with that rest. Love so, that. Yeah. So we do three step mashes on our, all of our loggers and the four on this beer. Okay. We were talking at the break about how you guys didn't bring us a lager. Yeah, we screwed that one up. Yeah. Yeah, we, we brew great lagers. We decided not to bring any. As long as we don't sure. have 12 IPAs in replacement of the lagers. Right, right, fun. right. No, I'm making fun of you guys, of course, because I just saw in my notes, oh, you, you guys love good continent oils and lagers, and then you showed up with some crazy beers for us, too, which is great. It was uh, probably a good choice on your part. Give us something to talk about other than, yeah, you're right. That's a fucking good Pilsner. Right. It's <laughs> a really good half. Well, that was exactly, right. yeah. that's that, exa- that's exactly that what we thought. in our mind right now. Yeah, yeah. Especially the way you describe it. It sounds so good. Oh, it's really good. And the way uh, the or the hef is so good. If your hef pils or if your pilsner is equally as good, wow. well, I'm even more upset. It's Easy for you to say, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> That's how fuming I am. My brain is scrambled. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> that sucks. It was great hef. And then under pitch by a lot. You say to to stress out and get the esters two oh. cells per barrel. Parson, I think is it's not even it's not even so much the, um, the ester formation to be honest, because we haven't actually checked to see if we. Under pitch versus standard pitch if the ester formation changes. Okay. Um, for us, us, it's been more fermentation control. So, um, and that was, again, something that we found at Gordon Beersh. I was there when we first started doing the production half at Gordon Beersh. And if you pitched at your standard rates, right, your, you know, 0. 0.75 to 1 million cells per mil per degree Play-Doh kind of, kind of numbers, mm-hmm. uh, we'd get like two and a half day fermentations and it'd blow out the top of the tank. Okay. Um, the Germans tend to go really low. So this one's actually 4 million, ce- 4 million cells per mil total. And, um, and we'll get like a seven-day ferment on it. I see. So it just gives us a little bit more control, you know, so we can – and this is done a little bit cooler temperatures because for us, the RHEF is more about the phenolics than the bubble gum and, and, and such. So we still get the banana, but it's the bubble gum. Which is a good choice, yeah. by the way. Yeah. yeah. So the, hence the, the long, you know, long mash rest, too, is we're trying to accentuate the, the clove – and then reduce the 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 bubble gum, you know, during that by doing a little bit lower fermentation temp. So again, and by going with a little bit slower ferment, we can we can just monitor and control it just a little bit better. I got you. you know, so we can we have you know on a forty barrel fermenter, we could fill this up to thirty two barrels ish, right, and and not overload it. If you ever look at the the rule of thumbs with hefts, they always say like half capacity. You really, got a forty barrel fermenter. You put twenty barrels in. You got twenty barrels because it'll of go thumb, crazy. It just goes crazy. It's because you just pitch too much. I see. So. Why does it? No one's ever said that to us on this show. Right. Uh, um, Not even yeah. Dan, which I feel like he keeps some secrets under <laughs> under his belt. Well, you right? know, John, I can't do Dan. I would like to do Dan. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. Just do something in German. I wonder if that kind of simulates the the right, effect on the yeast, like an open fermenter, like having that extra head capacity, <laughs> because I know fermentation shape really matters. Well, it, it does. Uh, I'm not sure. Again, in our location, so again, we've got 40 barrel fermenters, um, but we only we tend to. 
half batch most of our continental stuff in them, and then we'll 90% fill to, to working capacity with all of our other beers into them. Um, but uh, <clears throat> we haven't played too much with geometry with these beers, but we're really starting to play with or putting the thought into playing with it with our saisons. Um, there is there is some some research out there with saisons in terms of you know any kind of back pressure on the fermentations, you know because obviously a lot of the Belgian breweries and, and, and French breweries are using open open fermenters for mm. their saisons. Mm-hmm. So that's something in the future we want to try to play with, you know, based on that kind of ratio we're talking about in our fermenters. Let's see if it changes. But, uh, yeah, let's see if it changes. But this, these beers, like I said again, it's more the fact just that there's nothing worse than fermenting a beer with so much yeast, which the heft tends to do that. You lose not only do you lose capacity in terms of filling the tank, you lose capacity in what you call tank bottoms, right? So if you got a the, the conical shape of a fermenter, if you fill the damn thing ninety five percent full of yeast, mm. that's all loss. All you've done is now you're a baker. You're just you're just making yeast, right? You're making beer. So like, it's just trying to control what we would consider our high croissant cell counts. Yeah, it's like our low. I mean, so basically we're pitching to a cell count that at twenty four hours into fermentation we can take a cell count with and see the same number. You know that we're, that we'd get. So our lager and the hefeweizen both peak out at the same total concentration at mid fermentation, but one of them starts again seventy eighty percent lower initially. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's just it's just a, you know it's genetics, man. So. Scott, you got with the you got with the right brewer, man. This guy knows what he's doing. Yep. Yeah. I or like this. He just throws so many numbers out at you that yeah, you're, that you're like, sounds good. That's, I, yeah, I want to invest. And really, he's just napping back right. there. Yeah, right, right. Oh, they sad. don't even have a microscope at the brewery. <laughs> Man, imagine if they had the, if One, they had the switch two, just at, uh, at Anheuser-Busch over there in London, like little handheld Nintendo. No one would be napping. You should be taking turns playing Mario Kart. Yeah. Of course. That would be amazing. <laughs> well, and before we get into our next glass uh, of beer, uh, Scott, uh, you're actually from uh, from the wine side, right? Yeah, so I went to Davis, so I did kind of the opposite. So I went to Davis and did... He sounds disappointed. I yeah. Went to, I went to Davis. <laughs> okay. I'm mean, sorry I wasn't dancing in Scotland we, yeah. for five years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, we were boring. It's fine. I went to Davis. I sweated a lot. <laughs> fine. So, yeah, I went to Davis and I did a viticulture enology, but I also, <clears throat> when I was there, I studied uh, with Charlie Bamforth. So okay. I was, but I was the winemaker in the class. So there's a class of 20. It was... This was in 2006, so it was, oh, okay. you know, craft brewing was starting to kind of get hot, but hmm. the whole the class was full of winemakers, and it pissed him off because okay, Charlie it pissed Charlie <laughs> off. Of course, it pissed him off, right? And it was it, he gave us a lot of shit. Like I walked in a class one time, I'll never forget that. Walk in, was late, and he goes, "Hey, hey, class, look, it's the all American boy." You know, I was wearing a tank top and had a skateboard. He's like, you know, he's he's goes uh, blonde tank top. Short, not very intelligent. <laughs> yeah. So oh. you guys had to give out the compliments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was a great guy. We did so much fun in the class. And I he wish I, I wish I'd paid a little more attention because <laughs> I mean, we kind of, the winemakers kind of went in that class to kind of drink beer. Okay. And uh, just, you know, but we did. Um, he was that way, though. Like, that's a great part of his personality. If you can't take his shit, you're in trouble. The first time yeah. I met him, he came into my house and uh, my motorcycle was parked on my front patio at the time yeah. and then he met my girlfriend um, who's, yeah. who's British and he meets her he meets me he meets her for five minutes and he turns looks at me again looks back at her and goes what the fuck are you doing with him <laughs> We had known each other for five minutes. Yeah. Like that was it. Uh, okay, so no, this is his so, personality. So he was a great guy. But anyway, yeah. So I went to. Um, I didn't. I, I um, had no intention of ever getting into brewing, and um, worked. Uh, you know, did winemaking. Worked in New Zealand and okay. Napa, and ended up in um, Elder, <laughs> All Sonoma, Elder County. So Elder County has been been in Elder County for seven years now, and then met Casey doing. Uh, at Perry Creek, uh, my most recent job, and I was there for for uh, just winery. Uh, yep, yeah. winery six years there, and did did well, you know. And um, decided it was time to do something else, and reached out to Casey, and you know, sent him an email. How much, dude? How much for a ten barrel brew house? And, right. And uh, and with his background, he's like, we're not even going to talk about <laughs> right. ten barrels, right? Yeah. It was just a you know one of those couch emails, and yeah, that's kind of how the whole this whole crazy project started out and um and i'm just gonna guess by the way casey your bank account was shit but your attitude was 10 <laughs> barrels is not enough no no we we actually and we built the thing on paper to be 20 barrels but um 
when I was up at the shoots, I loved how much headspace we had in our kettle. So I thought, oh, let's just, I want like three feet of headspace, no okay. matter what our fill volume is. Yeah. Well, come to find out now we can fit 39 barrels in our kettle. Wow. So, so yeah. now we call it a 30 barrel system. Yeah. So, but uh, but yeah, there was no way we were going to do a yeah. 10, 15 barrel system. Nothing well, and I've, that. I've been there and I can tell you I have serious brewers envy about their brew system. It's sweet. Really? Mm. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, did you go order a brand new system? For, who'd you get it from? We did Mark's Mark's Design Metalworks, um, and we did a whole the whole SBA loan thing. I don't know how the hell we pulled that off. We <laughs> did a crazy business plan, and basically didn't very little little investment piece. We were able to do wow. the whole thing. I don't think that would happen. How the market is now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you know we we've been in the, what at this like four and a half years now, and okay. You know, we were able to kind of sell our soul to the bank. <laughs> did right. you have a hard time? Did you get accepted the first bank? Oh, you not at all. Oh. Pitch, pitch, screw up, figure out, pitch, screw up, figure out, and hmm. you know, it, you know, we ended up, you know, in an okay situation. But we were, we're lucky that we got what we did. But it was, it was not easy. We had, a, you know, like a thirty-page business plan with crazy financial wow rundown and the whole thing, calling up all my CPA buddies and trying to figure out what the hell the hell to get all that sorted but we right. pulled it off and in either of your uh, uh schooling your formal education was was business part of the curriculum i did like i was mm-hmm. manager like i almost double majored and decided it was too i minored out of managerial economics at davis and you yeah. had some too Casey. well yeah i definitely had some but the reason i never got so scott's 10 years younger than i am um and i never thought about actually opening a brewery because i didn't care enough about the business side of stuff okay and i knew i wasn't inherently good enough i mean i'm enough of an adult to realize my my weaknesses man and that was a flaw okay massive flaw mm-hmm. so it wasn't until you know scott just felt right you know i mean because nice. guys you know That's yeah cute. <laughs> very cute yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 shorter yeah. yeah. young guy yeah. Yeah. tussle the hair a little bit yeah. Yeah. you're right he's stacked yeah. Yeah. This, this is a red yeah. yeah. this dude was a water skier most of his life yeah. he was a haunch his powerful yeah. haunches oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but like scott said you know he did well at the winery you know scott didn't own a winery and you know he was doing well in terms of his skill he's a really good winemaker but okay. neither of us so neither, neither of us brought any like major money we're not backed you know with, with anything man the bank so the, the idea that the bank gave us yeah. this loan is is still surreal it's good for you can we ask how much the loan was do you think that's is that rude yeah uh, fuck it you can ask right. Right. How, how much was how much was so it? i think i mean the total project was two and a half million damn you know yeah. so and, and millionaires yeah but, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They Somebody owe, hell yeah! The they right. owe Keep in mind, this is Diamond Springs, so Eldorado County. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, it's like worth four million. Yeah, well, yeah. It's like it's, yeah. so it's like a ten million dollar building. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Well, that's the reason. Again, going back to the reason we're in Diamond Springs, right? We were able to with that loan was the building. You bought the building. I bought the building. Mm-hmm. It was it was all the equipment. It was all the ten improvements and a touch a, a very small amount of working capital. That's really you know, so. that's very good. That's a great budget, actually. That could have been a lot more than that. Like you said, anywhere else almost it would have been. Yeah. A oh yeah, a lot more especially than because that. we got the building out of it. There's, you could, couldn't even get a building probably down no. here for that. So. Oh god, no. My building is no. what a fraction of your size. There's no way I could get it for that. Yeah. yeah. So and that's what's cool. So at the end of the day, at least if we, you know we got a building. Yeah. No. That and that's really smart business, by the way. Uh, you know, if you can do it that way. So sounds like you guys did well for yourself. I too am surprised that the that the SBA would give a loan for that for for a startup like that. But it was an one, expansion, maybe, but yeah, uh, I know, you know. But well done, and look, they, I'm sure they're not regretting it so far. You guys are doing all right. They don't hassle us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The bank did kind of restructure, do some weird stuff, so maybe they forgot about us. But. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, that's, that's even better. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see what happens if you stop sending the checks. There you go. Then work. you'll find out <laughs> if they forgot I about you. I don't think that'll work. Well, tell us about the next beer that's in our glass, which is what the Rouge de Champ. Rouge de Champ. So this is kind of our again one of the blend. Like kind of of our kind of backgrounds, and this is kind of a crazy. This is a crazy beer, and this is the first time that we're actually like trying it. Like we decided that hey, why don't we just get this together? And this beer isn't totally done, so there's still some more blending that needs to be done, and it doesn't really fit a style. So we're calling this like a barrel aged 
like what do we call this a barrel age I don't even know what the hell we're gonna call this a barrel age uh, uh, yeah, rose saison. Rose saison. We're really right. good with really long monikers that no one can ever figure out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not you in the rare barrel, you're fine. Uh-huh. It's not a sour. Like, I don't and, get it. <laughs> but the problem is this beer is not a sour. So what we did with this beer is we brewed a lager, our lager base, and then so Casey was brewing a lager simultaneously. I was out at the winery. We picked grapes that day, like low bricks grapes. Uh, we press those um, off, so just literally just grapes into the press, press them off, put it in a porter tank, load it in my truck, and get the beer fermenting, cold crush the wine, rack the wine over into the beer. I think it was like the second or third day okay, with a mixed fermentation saison blend. Yeast. Yes. Okay. And, but no lacto, but there's naturally lacto and stuff going on here, but not much. You're yeah. gonna like this, Jay. Yeah, this. I mean, this beer too. Like this. I mean, and it, to be honest, it's not showcasing great right now because this needs to be. I mean, we've been sitting on it here for the last 10, 15 minutes because it is actually really effervescent. Mm-hmm. when You normally have it, mm-hmm. okay? Um, but it's a uh, like Scott said. Uh, the whole trick with this one is trying to build a base beer that's going to compete with the the grape ad. So, so like Scott said, you know, you're bringing in a, a low bricks grape, which is tends to be high acidity okay and so on the beer side if you're making a straight beer right we're always monitoring ph right you're always you're always trying to get the ph in certain ranges at different stages it's a whole different game when you're going to bring in a large percentage of high acid product Mm -hmm. and mix it into the fermentation so we have to start planning for that on the brew house side so i left the ph on this one super high compared to what we do for any other beer because we knew that the acidity from this this grape was going to be was going to be harsh okay so you know so that uh, the, the end the product anger. isn't just tart so yeah, it's, yeah so it's yeah. got some tartness but it's not doesn't hurt it's a carbonated rosé dude that's what i thought too it's a carbonated yeah. rosé yeah and i fucking love rosé you do I, yo i love it yeah I, love it. I thought you did too that's why i was like oh you're really gonna enjoy this i am really enjoying like, it I really but not because rose. of that yeah okay. I don't, yeah i i don't mind a rosé yeah. um it's actually not often that there's a good rosé in, well, in, Cal- in california yeah. is probably the problem um but yeah i, I mean it is more on the rosé side than it is on the beer side correct and that's right? the idea yeah and then so we're, we're still playing around with this. We have a few funky barrels, funky versions of this that we're thinking about putting a back blend a little funk in and then bringing a little freshness out with a fresh beer. So this beer is not done, hmm. but we're still working on it. Um, we're still trying to figure these beers out in a way. Cause it's just like wine, like in wine gig, it takes a long time to figure out a vineyard and figure out how the hell you're going to do a product. And we're kind of doing the same thing with this. So... Where we're at with what we're trying to do here is not do sour beers with this kind of product, but do a mildly funky beer. Okay. And so that's kind of where we're trying to find. So yeah, this, we, could ha- this could handle a little farmhouse. So we have that. Okay. A little bread. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we, yeah. Maybe yeah. not sour. I'm kind of with you on yes, that. Yes, to cut the acidity. Yes, and we did that last year, and we have two barrels of Brett version of this. So we, this is Krupp, This is in Krupp Brothers, a buddy of mine, Julian Fayard, um, we, we gave us some Krupp Brothers 2014 Cab Sab barrels, which are super clean, and then we put it in two dirty barrels. So we I think we had 10 barrels total. So we have the two barrels that we're still kind of holding off. So what we're trying to do now is figure out how much fresh beer we're going to bring in, how much dirty beer we're going to bring in, mm-hmm. and how to kind of bring it all together. So this is not a done beer, but this is just kind of, hey, this is kind of fun. Let's it's, try a, it's, it's, fun. it's a great start for not yeah. a done beer, don't so, you think? I mean, you yeah. must be enjoying it. There's nothing yeah. There's no real. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not right. as complex as you wanted, it sounds like. Yeah, and no. so, this is, so yeah, this is the second year we've done this. So the okay. last year had Brett. Oh, so I see. It was, uh, touch, but uh, not much. Not much. Yeah. So, so it was pretty much, this beer is pretty true to yeah, last year's version minus the Brit. Okay. Um, and so this is always a, a weird balance, too, because this kind of beer, to us, needs to be fresh. So, like, you have that Jolly Pumpkin that's on tap right now. Yeah. And that beer is phenomenal, mm-hmm. right? It's got mm-hmm. this nice... Nice funk to it, but it's and it's definitely got the the bread, you know, the kind of the bread character that's in there. Yeah, but it's fresh, you know, and so that that's makes what, sense. And that's what this one we're going to eventually work into. So you still want a bright like that, fresh. Yeah, bright. you want to keep that like mm-hmm. strawberry, um, you know, spritzy vibe. Like especially when we carbonate this, because we carbonate this real high, mm-hmm. that needs that. But and it's also got the barrel character and a mild oxidation, which kind of needs. Like we we thought about releasing this a little earlier, and we're like, you know, it's kind of why did we even put it in barrels? You know, so this is a, you know, it's like, you know, so it's like, so because we top, we top our barrels every month too. With our, we have sour, some sours going and all this, which makes it incredibly difficult because trying to not cross contaminate with slightly 
you know, not clean but not dirty. Sure. Is what we're trying, we're up against. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting battle, especially as a winemaker, because that, essentially that's what winemaking is. Winemaking is not clean, but it's not dirty. You yeah, know? that so, makes sense. So that's what we're trying to do here: is make a beer that's got like that oxidation, got that light funk, but doesn't have the full like brewers like brett lacto explosion yeah so we're trying to like balance that which is incredibly (laughs) difficult which is cool because we have a barrel room that's temperature controlled that we can that's been a huge tool for us because you can't age these at a 90 degrees in Mm -hmm. diamond springs Mm -hmm. So we're doing that. So we it's plus just, Casey can nap in there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the great room, nap. Show. The room's super cool. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. check the barrel so, room for ten to twelve hours. <laughs> would you Would you consider leaving a portion of this alone for those who come into the brewery and don't like beer? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, this is this is pretty much the, that's the market for us with this beer in general. But no, we have okay. but we have this at. So we also make our own wine, but we can't not legally. Oh, okay. um, but we make our that's own fair. wine at I'll Perry cut that Creek. Out. No, hey, legal, we make it legally, okay. but not, yeah, but not, um, you help make it at Perry Creek so, and then you can sell it at the yeah, brewery. So I make it at Perry Creek under their bond and then we, we sell it back to solid ground. Okay. And, um, so you don't have to, you can make this exactly as you like. And so not, we, we yeah. make rosé, sparkling rosé. We make a sparkling Pinot Grigio. We make a Cinso. We do a Grenache. Like we do all these stuff. And, but, yeah, but again, like we're making those at Perry Creek and sell them back. I well, and I like that they're not just Zinfandel. Zinfandel, which California has way too much Zinfandel, yeah. for but those are uh, like lighter kind of bodied wines that people don't really you don't really get a good Grenache. Yeah, no, and that's the foothills. Like and the Cinso is super mm-hmm. rad too, and the sparkling Pinot Grigio grown in Apple Hill at three thousand feet and barrel aged and in in like twice used French oak barrels and sparkled. Is wow, super cool. <laughs> that <delicious>. sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's probably our number. Number like what three seller right yeah, now? It out, really? it, sometimes it outsells IPA. Really? So. Oh God bless then. Dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> because that's the thing. Because we have a bona fide eating establishment at the brewery, we can we can do those things, right? I mean, we'll you know we're, we have you know a few ends of Firestone, you know Firestone Walker, and mm-hmm. some of those guys are local, man. So they'll we'll have their beer on sometimes. We don't do guest beers. But like you know, the bona fide eating establishment and having a you know having food mm-hmm. allows us to do the wine model. And, nice, you know. So yeah, we couldn't do that here for the same reason. Yeah, no, you know, yeah. no full yeah. kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I mean, but the the wine model is big for us because we've got what do you think we got, Scotty? Like maybe sixty, seventy wineries between Amador and Shenandoah Valley. Yep. Yeah, we have a bunch of wineries, right? That's agro tourism's huge. That's, that's great. We're at, so. Like angry tourists, like and they probably <laughs> so angry. <laughs> Man, right now I'm gonna go on a fucking wine tour. Give me some wine. Swear to God. <laughs> and all those vendors probably love drinking your lager. We have a huge winemaker mm. customer base, and that's all they drink. Yeah, that's all I drink. It's yeah. all we drink. Lager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, uh, Vinny was always, always says that when he's on the show here, him being in wine country up there too, is that um, yeah, you can't make good wine without a shitload of lager or something. Whatever he's saying is. Oh yeah, I'm paraphrasing. I mean, we got a, a big agritourism area. We've got you know this the same beer that you guys are drinking. We do another version called Palm de Champ. Um, so we've got Apple Hill. So Apple Hill, most Bay Area people know because they they take their one weekend trip a year and go get their apple pies and their pumpkins, you know, mm-hmm. in, in the fall. And uh, we've got probably this is a total guess, but probably thirty, forty apple apple farms up there. Right. Wow. So that was you know back in the and again I'm gonna get this wrong too. And I, I worked for the ag department for nine years, so this is I'm gonna butcher this. <laughs> but uh, but uh, we um you know roughly you know like in the, in the late fifties, sixties. Again, it could be completely wrong, but. You know that area was kind of decimated with with infections with the, the na- native crops up there, so they all kind of bound together. Okay, and decided to do to plant an agritourism crop, and that's mm. and that's apples. Interesting. Right? So so we do a version of this where we take part of it again under the Perry Creek bond and turn it into hard cider, mm-hmm. and then they would take the rest of that juice and instead of adding the, the grape juice like we did, you know, the, the wine juice that we did in this this one here, we use the same base, same that that yeast strain that stays on strain is actually a, a two. A, Two uh, two strain yeast. It's a native sac strain and a and a Belgian saison strain. Oh, that's and, cool. And it's um, but we'll do it with the apple juice. Mm-hmm. And that's our palm de champ. Palm de champ. So nice. Bad nice. French. So against um, yeah. yeah. Apple, right. apple field. So I love call it. Him not an apple orchard. It's an apple field. That's my French buddies. <laughs> we're giving me shit. <laughs> he called <laughs> the wrong cool. thing. Yeah. It's, it's cool though. It's like so we're saying rosé field is rouge de champ and apple field. Right. But, <laughs> again, but super cool. Barrel fermented and punchins. A little bit of bread on that. A little bit of lacto, and lacto seems to take off a little more in the apples because I think the pH must be a little, 
a little higher. But that but. stuff, that's just natural? The Brett yeah. and the lacto? You're uh, not pitching lacto, that. Or the you lacto are? is natural. The Brett is a residual uh, wine in the barrels. In the barrels. Okay. And the, yeah. Are you able to uh, blend Uh-oh. finished wine and hard cider into the beer, or do you have to co-ferment the juice with the you wort? Know, we co-ferment it just because we feel like it turns out better. You know, okay. we've done a little, we've experimented, but we find the co-fermentation melds so much better. Hmm. We did one beer called Arzel. It was a Viognier strong ale that we blended. So we did blend that, mm-hmm. and we didn't really like it as much as, like, these other beer wine hybrids. We did a true, because we we thought this Brute IPA thing was so ridiculous, we did a what we thought was a true Brute IPA. So we did a 20% Chardonnay, no enzyme, but Chardonnay being the predominant you know, champagne grape. Yeah. So we're like, oh, you know, we're just gonna we're gonna just do some. We're gonna spend way too much money on this IPA. <laughs> right. And take some local Chardonnay to twenty percent Chardonnay, and then what do we use the hops? Haltar Blanc and yeah, it was whole, mostly Hall Blanc, a little whole melon. Yeah, so Haltar good. Blanc and whole melon. Good. You know, but it was choice. but it was super acidic because we picked it at mm. Champagne Bricks, being even oh. stupid, more stubborn, live and learn. <laughs> uh, super cool beer, probably named mm. totally wrong. It should have been like a Chardonnay. Chardonnay ale or something like that. Chardonnay ale, dude. There we <laughs> yeah, go. There we go, man. But that beer was super cool, and it actually yeah. tastes better now because again, age helps yeah. wine, and so it's actually tasting in its prime right now. But we brewed a bunch of it. We think we brewed forty barrels of that. By the time it grew, as we blended stuff into it, is it so legal to add? Finished wine to beer? No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, now that you said you still have some for sale. So. No, so this was co-fermented. Oh, okay. So these are all co-fermented okay. products. Um, and so that's fine. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. So again, like the other one, like yeah, we it doesn't. It's not legal and it doesn't work. So it's that's good. It doesn't right. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not even tempted to do it. <laughs> right. All right, let me get us to a break because I want to try some more of your beer. So uh, we're going to take a quick break right now. When we come back, uh, we're going to be talking more with Solid Ground Brewing Company. Hang in there. It's the session. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Tyler from Libertine Brewing Company in the central coast of California. You're listening to Brewing Network, The Session. It sucks. Does it suck? It sucks. But that's what's good about it, is that it sucks, right? All right, welcome back to the session. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us. We're still hanging out with Solid Ground Brewing Company from Diamond Springs, California. If you want to go learn more about them, you can go to solidgroundbrewing.com right now. they got a great website. You can learn about their beer and their wine, their food. You can learn about their story. There's pictures of these two. you got the young one and the old one. <laughs> The tall one and the one that feels good? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Uh, Don't worry, Casey. I'm also the old one, so I'm with you, brother. (laughs) Is that what we have? That's what you have. And arthritis, I think, is too. Yeah, that might be the case. Uh, All right. So we are still talking beer uh, with these folks, and um, we got more uh, uh, beer in our glass. And um, I'm loving this kind of mix of, of the wine and the beer. And I, more so, I just want to point out that I love that you do both. I love that you do the hardcore, just like regular beer styles, right? I'm sure you guys have a great IPA. We've been talking about the pills. We've been talking about the half and all these experimental styles. And you haven't just brought us like a sour bomb either, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the goal for our place. I mean, we've got those taps you pulled up on the website. Those are all, uh, we import those in from the Czech Republic, right? We built a brewery to be pil- a Pilsner brewery. Oh, yeah. Right? So oh, those, look at those. Yeah. Those are beautiful, too. Yeah, those are all those are all Pilsner Kel taps. And the ones that you see there in the forefront, um, those are all, we had a, a machinist in, where's he at, in Idaho? Yeah. Now, yeah, machine- yeah total <laughs> Yahoo. Yeah, Roger. Those, Thanks, Roger. Yeah, those are all, um, those are nitro taps. So that we had, wow. we, because we can't, you can't oh, put I a see, nitro tap. On a Czech faucet, so we had we had this really amazing machine, machinist make those nitros for us. So because we do all, we wait, do, wait. Uh, also, just we go back to that for a second. But just design wise, all of these taps, by the way, are coming out of a brick wall. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's kind yeah. of stupid, right? It's it really doesn't nuts. even look like a. It's so cool. It doesn't look like a faux brick wall either. No, it's it's real brick, man. We um, again bank loan, man. So <laughs> <laughs> we had a loan. Yeah. We spent the loan. It's, <laughs> it's so gorgeous. I think it looks so cool. Okay, sorry. Back to the yeah. taps, but I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, this, yeah. So basically, um, we'd been up when we were having the the system built up there in Vancouver, Washington. Scott and I would take these little trips up there to check on the equipment and, when, and kind of pop around Portland. Hmm. And there was a little brewery that had a whole bunch of brick, and it looked super cool. And yeah. immediately kind of threw it. It was the, it was the comments. It was the Since comments. Thanks, Modern Times, for oh, taking yeah, that's for right. killing that place for us. Yeah, yeah know that place. We <laughs> yeah. spent some time up at the comments. Yeah, the comments, yeah. right? So the comments had that cool brick. And then um, those taps, 
you know, we always wanted, right? I mean, when um, when I graduated from uh, the university, they they told us that we could pick one spot, any beer any beer region in the world, and they would send it to you know. We paid all of our tuition, man. So it was how much did they banked it all? But they yeah, they we everybody. I wanted to go to Germany. Everybody else wanted to go to Prague. So we went to Prague and saw these taps. Okay, I loved them, man. And they yeah. they make. I mean, they're built for pouring pilsner. I okay. mean, it, it, it's a bit of a trial sometimes trying to pour hoppy beers out of them because they're they're made made to put that big creamy head on a on a pilsner kel. So it's sometimes mm. hard to get that nice flatter pint of a you know on a, on an IPA where you don't yeah. lose all that aroma. But it looks like they have their own gas regulator on them too. They do. Yeah, they're all they're all, they're all regulated. They got creamer functions. They're you know the whole nine yards, man. They're they're five times the price of a standard U.S. Perlick. Okay, but, uh, wow. But they're cool. Which get, and and listen, a standard U.S. Perlick is not cheap. No, wow. Right, man, yeah. no, no, yeah. we, and we've got uh, 27 of them. So and the, we tend to keep about what five or six wines on tap in, in a good mm-hmm. period of the year that you pour yeah. through the same. Oh, you yep. pour the yeah. wine through the tap. Yeah. That's Again, we so try to cool. pass a little of the wine savings that the non pack packaging mm-hmm. part we, we kegel our wine onto the consumer as yeah. much as we can but wine's expensive you know yeah, wine so. bottles are yeah. expensive as hell dude mm-hmm. like the big fancy you know four oh five yeah bucks, dude. yeah so, so you go to a restaurant you know you get a 15 dollar glass of, of, of red so we're trying to keep it sub tens so we do wow, that nice. sparklings and stuff like that so Preach. okay yeah. yeah but those taps i mean like i said um you know we've we've got a dry irish stout on one of those you know we got which is on year round. We've got our uh, our pilsner, you know, which is a a fun. The pilsner I feel is is one of the better in the area, and that's not a like pat on the back kind of thing. But um, I'm a huge pilsner drinker. My favorite pilsner locally is Trumer. You know, I love Trumer. Great pils. pilsner, yeah. And um, ours does differ though in the sense that ours is a is a richer, a little bit heavier pilsner, more in the Czech style. So mm-hmm. it's um, and it's not using zots. So ours are all Kesbeck hops out of out of the same region. Oh, they're, they're, in, in their, you know zots. You know, parentage, but it's a it's a very very amped up version of Zots. So it's, it's okay. bell pepper and spice, and, and again we do that big big step mash on it. So it's got a whole bunch of body, nice. but it still drinks you know light and clean like a pilsner. But it's just it's just richer. So we kind of built the place on that beer. Okay. Again, we have the Hefeweizen year round, the Dryer Stout. Um, the yeah. Dryer Stout's really great too. Yeah, that's so we call it nice. Oldest rock in Ireland happens to look a lot like Guinness. It happens to taste a lot like Guinness. Yeah, it's like yeah. G N I E S S. It's pronounced nice. Yeah, I love it. I bet a lot of people order Guinness. Yeah, good nice. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys correct them, or you just go? Yeah, no, yeah. We'll have you all have Guinness. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, but you know the black and tans and everything. You know our pills. And that nice go really well as a black oh, and tan wow. historically. That's, so that's kind of why awesome. we always kept them on. And, sounds good. And I'm a session beer drinker from all the time in the UK. You know, I love I love Cascale. I love you know low ABV beers, mm-hmm. and um, we can't always make them and sell them because of the, the nature of the market. Yeah, you know. So it, it's like the beer that we're going to have these two beers in front of us again. This is when we stuck our hand up the, the skirt of your of your tap list. Yeah, uh, we got a, a twelve percenter and a ten and a half. Yeah, Love just it. in time but, uh, for springtime. Yeah, so this on is, tap here at the Half Grenade, folks, yeah. probably for the next couple of days anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, so the first one is called what? Pharaoh's Island. Yep. So this is um, Pheromone so, Island. All right. So Muscat of Alexandria is one of the most ancient wine grapes, and some, a wine grape that I really love. Um, it's um, it's huge. It looks like a table gray, but it tastes really cool. It's very spicy, perfumey, super cool, and it happens to grow like stones. Th- you know, this is um, Starfield Vineyard, which is actually opening a few few weeks right up by us. And uh, he, it's, Tom, does a great job growing grapes. And we talked him into letting these hang. So this is you'd make a late harvest muscat out of this traditionally, but instead we use this as our sugar substrate hmm. into a. English style barley wine. I'll let Casey speak to the yeah. English style barley wine. It smells like a date. Yeah. So yeah, like date. Water. So the base on this beer is <laughs> Your dates um, are drunk. <laughs> this base is mostly Maris Otter with a little bit of, of British Crystal One Twenty, and um, and so this is brewed to a potential of about nine percent alcohol um, on the base beer side. Just on the beer side. Just the beer side. Mm-hmm. So then, and the same kind of thing that we did on, we were t- when we were you know. When we were talking pH with adding wines and such, this was made out of, as a very basic beer mm. in terms of pH. So typically on a beer like this, I'd probably end the boil, you know, five one on the pH scale. This is like five six. Okay. Um, to wow. account for the acidity of the grapes, and and this is this is a lower acidity grape, obviously, like Scott said, it's a, it's a later it, harvest. Is the idea that that one brings the other down, or do they stay where they are, and it just compensates for the flavor? Uh, no, it's, it's well, a little. Both. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, a little. Both. I guess it so, must blend. And yeah, so I mean, as a pr- again coming going back to like you know we were talking about production brewing methods. 
we're not basing the procedure on taste initially. It's based on numbers, okay. right? Because we can't forecast what it's going to taste like. Mm-hmm. So we just know that. So a little a little tangent, but not. Well, That's okay. Short, You're but, good. Uh, but like you know, with an IPA, right? You're trying to so a base lager, like our our standard pilsner, will end the boil around four nine to five pH. Um, that will tend to yield us a pH of around like four three ish mm-hmm. post fermentation, which is is a bright beer, but it's not acidic. Okay. Um, whereas if we're going to do an IPA, you know, we'll take it down like four seven post boil because you have a pH drift creep upwards when you dry hop. Okay. So we're always trying to hit that same number that like that four three ish number. But different beers require different treatment to hit that number. I see. So, like with, again, with larger hop additions, cold side require, you know, or dry hop side require, you know, a lower pH to start with. All right. Um, but when it comes to a beer like this, where again you're bringing in a naturally acidic product, and once you get rid of all the sugar, you're just left with acid. Um, you you have to just kind of guess at it a little bit. So we kind of, you know, we'll guess at the, at, well, we won't guess. Scott will will get a Brix a sugar content on the grapes. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll have the sugar content of the wort. You know, so we can kind of, and then Scott can kind of, you know, calculate the fermentability of that, that juice and what kind of alcohol would get out of that juice. And then we'll, then, you know, this is all reverse engineering in our head. Yeah. And then you get back to the city gas at the acidity. acidity. But from experience, obviously. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's the the goal with this, because obviously, and this is not really a barley wine. And so it is, Scott's right. I mean, that's what it, and that's what the intent is, but we totally just kind of again screwed with it in the sense that this is not an English yeast strain. This is actually a saison Calais blend. <laughs> wow. We brought so, that into wow. yeah. wow. so, a fun beer, though. Fun beer. So because so yeah. there weren't enough variables. Right, right. <laughs> so it started as a, started as the nine percent alcohol base Maris Otter British Crystal Malt beer. Um, only about fifty BUs. Thirty five bricks Muscat of Alexandria <laughs> juice, <laughs> which is crazy high. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. Again, late harvest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so this would be, would not ferment out. Even close if it was a wine. Wow. So, all right. so but the, the trick here, obviously, and, and for you know, maybe that doesn't need homebrewing specialists listen to a lot of the modern, modern, you know, kind of, you know, um, advice on, on adding sugar to, to a fermenting product, right? You, you know, we let this beer start as a malt only product mm-hmm. until about day two or three when it's really taking a foothold uh-huh. and it's, you know, it's, it's nice and healthy. Then Scott would bring the juice back and then we'd, you know, in stainless and we'd inject it straight into the tank mid fermentation. So that it, wow. it's, it's which is adding sugar, dry. right? Yep. So it's our sugar. It's our sugar with a, a acidic sugar right. with cool aroma. I see. Right. Yeah. Well, so you're not going to foil the fermentation by having this big, you but, know. Right. But again, it's high still alcohol, it's still a acidity. Right. Hmm. It's, but it's still a wild product too. So we have to be a little careful because I mean, we, there's there's lacto. There's all kinds of there's natural yeast on this thing. So we have to kind of there's no sulfur. So we got to keep it relatively cold, relatively stable. But, but you're determining but, the volume that you add based on this kind of in your head math you guys were talking about with the with the acidity. Yeah, the predetermined yeah, we had a predetermined volume and we did a pick based on the beer. Okay. So yeah. We yeah. did all kinds of crazy stuff with this beer too. We may also did a sour out of this beer and we also did a late harvest muscat of Alexandria standalone. So wow. it's kinda cool. What yeah, is so, this finished A B V right here? It's about twelve twelve and change. Okay. So, and, but you'll notice, obviously, for a 12 and a half, a 12 and a half beer, it's relatively dry. I mean, you're never going to be dry, right? I, I mean, think it's dry. But it's dry. And I, I, I don't think that boozy is the right word. I don't think it's boozy, but you, the, you can smell the alcohol. It needs some It's kind of so. why I've joked about how your girlfriends must be drunk, because you can smell the oh. alcohol on their breath when you were saying, like, oh... <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't get that close. Yeah. <laughs> so we aged we we aged half of this out. So we're aging. We have some of this in barrel and some of this in stainless. That we're aging in cool box, and we're just about to pull this off the tap menu. So the whole plan was never to release it this year. Wow! But we thought it was so badass. We're like, oh, we're going to release it this winter. It's so we, we released it. Yeah, it's yeah. so yeah. badass. Is yeah. all of the grape juice that you're using untreated, like no sulfur or anything? Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. And it's super cool because we have all these. That's what's cool about Elroy County is we have all these local ingredients. So close to us like we do a, our we do a pakaya uh with pilsner and it's our, our so we it's it's our uh, i assume it's so a grape it's I didn't a, understand so we any do we do a local um this local grape grower that we know he brings in smoked peppers uh so it's uh, ghost peppers and uh well, and, and scotch bonnets and, scotch and trinidad, trinidad. Bonnets. we don't wow. even know what the hell they are half the time we actually were doing it today because we're about to release that in a month and it was like mustard gas. We were coughing. We had to <laughs> oh, get back. I bet. Yeah. But um, the oak but, smokes it all too. But point 
point being, like, we have all these cool ingredients right at our fingertips. We, yeah. do, we do a peach ale. So we do, like, a... What the fuck is a peach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have some local growers, the Manfields up there, they give us a bunch of second peaches, and we hand-shucked those and, wow. and like, wow. fermented. So, it, it's, so yeah, it's, it's, it's working, too. Cool. Like, yeah. I think that... I think that it's actually the aroma of the muscat grapes that keep the aroma of this from being boozy. Yeah, well, the muscat is a very aromatic varietal. Okay, so like that is the the draw to that to the muscat of Alexandria in that in that oh. beer, mm-hmm. and um, so it is. It's it's. I mean, it, it's spicy. It's peachy. It's mm-hmm. stone fruit. You know, it's um, also barley whiny. Just like it, this one tastes like a beer too. Well, and gingerbread. It's more yeah, this one does wine. taste like yeah. a beer. <laughs> There's more barley wine now than it's ever been. So Scott and I, when we were sitting in your tap room. We're like, whoa! This is not the same beer because we um when that we that beer at twelve percent alcohol, hmm. we were serving about eighteen days into production. Okay, it okay. was so clean, wow, and so well fermented. But the saison yeast was more forward. It was more point. forward. Yeah, yeah. I see. So, but that's why we, when Scott said it was badass, that's when we put it on because it was like this twelve percent, no fusel, you know, no rubbing alcohol, no nothing. It wasn't a barley wine, though. It didn't taste like a barley wine. Okay. That was a okay. mid-sugar ad. Yeah. It really kind of kept those fusels down. Right. And it was it was cool. But the barley wine drinkers, right? Because it's just like IPA drinkers. You have barley wine drinkers. You have mm-hmm. amber drinkers. There's always Very a small, drinker, right? Very small barley <laughs> so, wine drinkers yeah, versus yeah, IPA. Yeah, yeah. 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 Really, that yeah. one guy. Bro, yeah. 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 Barley wines. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, this isn't a barley wine. Well, it, well it, technically, the malt base was a barley wine, but it was never really a categorical beer. But, um, Are you going to hold on to any more of this to see if that it. barley wine age keeps going? Oh, bu- yeah, we have a bunch still. A bunch so of yeah. you have to. Sitting in yeah. 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 It's so it's interesting some, have... how it comes back up, like yeah. mm-hmm. maltiness so, you wouldn't expect. Yeah. You know? yeah, so yeah. I, th- I think we've got um, – so we have two wine barrels. Like I think they're like third-use wine barrels. They're white wine, Chardonnay barrels that we filled with this. And then we have a stack of kegs that we're going to – we shelved, and we're going to let those yeah. cruise. So Well, cool. and, and then let me ask this part about you know we haven't we haven't we barely mentioned hops except for in the pilsner um so you know like a like a bigfoot barley wine let's take an example right you, you kind of got to use a lot of hops uh to back up all the sweetness of the barley wine so to me like bigfoot always tastes like a triple ipa before it ever tastes like a barley wine right is this heavily hopped as well or you don't have to do that no that one actually we wanted the wine to be a little bit more present so that's only so for a 12 percent beer if that was a straight english barley wine i'd probably go like 90 bus on it right this is yeah, only yeah. about 50 50 okay so it's, yeah which um so it's very very subtle okay the um this other one the uh which we'll talk about here in a second this is it's a russian imperial stout with with uh with with a wine and chocolate component that one was was like 100 bu you know okay. but um but that one was it's not anymore yeah I mean, but uh that was that was more going to be like more of a, a west coasty you know a russian imperial um, but that one that we just had, the Faroes Island, was never meant to be a hop-driven beer. Got it. It was all about just the Maris Otter. And t- we were trying to get the Maris Otter, to be honest, to blend with the Muscat of Alexandria. We wanted a malt-based thing. I mean, Scott himself is not a huge malt-based drinker. He doesn't love malty beers. Mm-hmm. You know, he, and um, where me having, again, some U.K. background, I love kind of some malt. So that was a good hybrid kind of thing where we could both be a little bit happy with what we were doing. Sure, so I could play with Samaris Otter. He could, he could, you know, play with the Muscat, and, and it worked. But and would it make sense, Scott, that you can work better with malt flavors and wine than say hop flavors and wine because your maybe your background's not in using bitterness. Well, you know, hop hops and wine are a tough thing in general. Just like triple IPAs or whatever. We 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 we've, we've pl- toyed with this is that they tripled quadruple IPAs that the you know the hops don't like all that high alcohol and it gets weird so but yeah i know but i i mean so yeah i, I mean i feel like I can, I can we can play with hop aromas and stuff all day long it's just, just i think when things get too, too yeah the bitterness is fine too i mean it's just when we get play with the alcohol and, and yeah. hops is where we struggle i see so. okay well you mentioned this next one casey uh in our glass devil's leap which uh, tell us all about it, but I think this one was complex in a lot of ways. Also from a Solera, right? Yeah, yeah. And so Scott will talk more about the wine side because this one was was fun. But on on the beer side, this is um, very much just a you know I think this beer totaled out at like ten and a half ABV. Mm-hmm. Is that right? I mean, we're Somewhere, ten, yeah, ten and ten, ten and change. I forget where we're at. Yeah, but some, right, right, ten three or something. Same yeah. thing though. You know, started with a lower based ABV, you know, kind of base, but it's it's you know a lot of breeze, roast barley, and just. Uh, you know, it's, it's basic Russian Imperial style. Yeah, but the, the difference is with our beers, and we were saying this on the break a little bit, is when Scott mentioned that we're trying to do beers that are 
dirty and clean at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more difficult for us because we're 100% wine barrels. We don't have any any spirit barrels in house. Spirit barrels obviously come in inherently, you know, sterile because they've got you know, you know, 40 ABV, you know, liquor in them. Mm -hmm. You know, the the wine, like I said, doesn't matter. You can have winemakers all day long tell you the barrel's clean. You get it and you put a beer in it, expecting this really nice, bright, fresh product, and it's Brett. Yeah. You know, because so, so with any of these beers, um, this one included, you know, we've, we've, we're still trying to maintain a certain level in, of integrity on the base beer. So this is never meant to be, have any kind of funk to it. So it's, it was just always meant to be just a Russian Imperial Stout that showed some of the uh, some of the wine characteristics. So this has got um, this has got old, you know, old great product in it. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. in terms of stuff we've sat on. Um, but it's uh, and beer, old and beer, beer too, old beer too. So it's uh, either you've gotten me good and buzzed, um, or it's just my favorite beer, or both. This is my favorite <laughs> beer so far. This one's really, really good. Yeah, so this one's so this is fun because I mean, what we did with this, so we bought some barrels actually just right in Martinez from Tenillery O, some punch in. So we got a hundred. They actually kind of we did a beer trade, a hundred thirty gallon punch in new French oak. Uh, and then there was three, um, I think, uh, from Vineyard 29, uh, I think they were, they were like third use, uh, punch in. So we aged the, the, this original beer for a year in, in those. So we have a new oak component. So you'll taste the vanilla in there. The vanilla is not from the chocolate or anything else. It's from the French oak. Okay. And then we decided to take that one step further and uh, blend um, this into stainless, brew another beer, ferment that beer, and blend that beer into this. So, so we actually so this we have a Solera. So we, we're calling that like I mean, was it another Russian Imperial Stout? The same beer, yeah, same okay. exact recipe. Yeah. And then you know, and and then we blended a little petite straw in there too. You know, and uh, <laughs> a little bit, and uh, and and then we um, and then we actually pulled um, the same volume back out, and we're aging that back in the same barrels. Okay. We're a little scared, so we're aging that at, at in our cold box in punch ins. So we have the four punch ins in our cold box, just because there is a little. We do get a little lacto action, so we get a little funk in this. Mm-hmm. Again, that wine funk that we're looking for, so a little oxidation, little funk. But not by no means sour. By no means. Are you getting bread. that right now out of this beer? Just a, there's just a little of that touch. But we we put so so then we took it one step further. And we put a little chocolate in this because we felt like it was a little rugged, and the chocolate kind of tamed it out and brought yeah. brought it kind of pulled everything together. Okay. We might not need the chocolate next year. The barrels were a little bit powerful, so we put a little chocolate in this. Um, so I think it masked that a bit. Um, but yeah, I get a little. There's just a touch of that lacto sour in here. That's okay. what makes this beer really dry, very drinkable. It had man. Maybe it's the chocolate. I could see that the beer could have easily become kind of acrid. Yes. And is that when you say rugged? Is that kind of what you're yes. picking? Up? And so the chocolate was able to help you because it's not acrid now. Correct. But that's what we're. Then that's one of the things we're struggling with with wine barrels. We have a big array of wine barrels, a big array of you know friends that give us and we buy barrels from and. Beer does not, whatever reason, we're trying to figure this out still, beer does not take, like, barrel character, like, new oak nearly as well as wine does. Okay. Like, it's very strange. Like, yeah. And we're really struggling with this, because Napa cabs, like, I like, I mean, like, we've, we've seen, they call it 200% new oak. They'll actually take new oak, do a Napa cab one year, take that out, put it into new oak again. Oh. 200% huh. new oak. Cool. Okay. And we California do, just fucks shit up. <laughs> yeah, right? But, yeah, uh, yeah. And then we do this with, uh, like, 25% new oak, and we're like, what the hell? And then we blend it again. And Meaning like, that you get so much get more so, of it. We yeah. get so much oak. So okay. we're still trying. I mean, again, this is whole the whole, you know, it's, it's going to take a lot of time to figure these beers out. I mean, yeah. These are patient beers, and we're still blending. We're still having to blend and mess around with them, but... I think that that's fascinating. Though the point being is like, yeah, we need and once used are risky because they have infection. We don't know the, the history, and even if we know the history, and we, you know, there's no sulfur and there's the pH is higher, so it's tough. But so, you're sort of you have no choice because if you so, use new French oak, you, you'd leave it on for what a day? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> just rack so, it in so, and rack it out. Yeah, so, like, so, exactly. And you lose all that complexity that you get because you know in wine age, you know, when we age in barrel, like the first month or two months, three months is awful. The wine sucks, but it mm. tames out. And that's why I kept telling Casey, it's going to tame out. It's going to tame out. I don't know if this is going to tame out. Right? Dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is kind of like how crazy the story sounds, but like what we did do. We're 
I mean, we are trying to learn how to do this a little bit with these kind of, you know, not very... I love this, though. Techniques. And and you're going to end up... Well, you've already ended up with these products that are so unique. I haven't had beer like this. Yeah, um, no, not at all. Yeah. Right? So Especially you, on purpose. You're, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you yeah. get, like, a higher alcohol beer that's a little whiny or a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Yeah, you it, accidentally love it. Right? Yeah. Well, you're like, oh, this is... Yeah, I get it, but this is they're they're so unique. So you're yeah, so you're already figuring it out. And you of course you've got a long way to go. And you know, look, I know you got you're not like a sour brewer, right? But but when we talk to Jay at the Rare Barrel and he 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 talks about the same things about these variables that he doesn't understand. Mm-hmm. He's like, "I don't all I've all I've done is uh take notes and monitor that this is happening. Mm-hmm. I don't know why yet." And you just keep like mm-hmm. like uh, gathering data, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 figure it out. And it takes time. It's, it's slow. Yeah, so. and we've learned things already that would you know again take way too much time to go into, but things that we had no idea. And then once once we found them out, it made perfect sense. We thought about them in terms of you know the chemistry and the science of of any of these these products. Can you Maybe give f- me an example of one of these things? A diacetyl, okay, a major major one, right? I mean, um, you know, there's a lot of. A lot of prime, you know, with in wine with the malolactic kind of you know fermentations and such, there's a diacetyl component, and when you go to blend that, you know, a, a wine that's had a lot of malolactic you know, fermentation into a beer, mm. there's no, you know, providing that the beer is a finished product, there's nothing to mop that diacetyl back up. Okay, you know. Yeah, it's just gross. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Wait, so, and so have you, like, had to throw shit out? Or no, have you found no, a way to we, clean this luckily up? Luckily, we've always done it in, in a trial format first. Okay, okay. So, like, Scott will bring the wine in, you know, and we'll always do a, a, a pre-trial blend. And and we it took a while to figure out, well, why isn't this wine, you know, working with this beer? Yeah. And I was like, well, of course. Yeah, there's it's thrown diacetyl because of the, the wine process side where that, that's not a, an issue. Right. On the beer side, we can't have it, and uh, we but we have nothing left to mop it. Okay, you know, so you don't want to release a buttery lager? No, that's what they do with Chardonnay, right? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Man. Pretty it's much, like, yeah. I mean, I was just going to say, look at you guys. You're figuring this out, and there's brewers out there that can't even figure out how to get rid of fucking diacetyl. Well, well, Let's I know. be honest. I mean, when the diacetyl is an issue, man, I mean, it is, and like you know, and it's, it's, I'd say it's inexcusable, you know. But I agree. And if we, we were very, I mean, a, a tank of a beer wine hybrid could potentially cost us 20 grand, mm. you know? So if we just threw it in there, you know, okay. you know, it wouldn't be a good thing, man. So we, uh, you know, and unfortunately, <laughs> you got that loan to pay, son. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately too, it's, there's only two of us that are tasting this, Scott and I, right. And, and palates are individual, you know? So it's, yeah. you know, we always have to be really, really careful. So like, even like this last beer, you know, that Scott was talking about, you know, with that, that new Oak took over the spear, I mean, literally dominated yeah. it. And, um, you know, and, and so, you know, there's a lot of really good liquid, you know, liquid cacaos out there now mm-hmm. that are really cool you know, on the brewing industry side. And Good save. Yeah. And so it was like, you know, let's just try it. Because in, in general, when you're going to build a beer, right, if you're trying to build a higher ABV beer and try to balance, or if you're trying to make a beer taste chocolatey, mm-hmm. right, you always need a, a crystal component, right? Something, something that's a little sweet to make your brain think that there's chocolate in it. Yeah. Well, this beer was missing all that sweetness because it was so dry from the wine, so, yeah. so and dry a, a from little, the tannin. And a little lacto-souring, yeah, a little like, sour. so it's like, yeah. Smart yeah, decision, yeah. then. You need some sweetness, right? So, But that's what yeah. brewing is. I mean, it's always – there's very little issues on the brewing side. As opposed from, it's all on like, Scott's side. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to make good, clean beer. Like, you can fix anything. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's, just, it's when you fuck shit up in terms of, you know, bad practices that you got to, you know, take your medicine. Right. You know, but there's no excuse on a beer like this when, you know, we have good – if the products are clean, we can find something, which is why, like I said, again, that Rouge de Champ that we had earlier was still a work in progress because mm-hmm. it's – we know what the potential is because we had it last year. It's just it's – just, how do we want to treat it from this point on? Yeah, and I'm um, same with that. Smart beer, brewing, you know. So it's but that one's also tough, just because we're c- we're coming across the problem of acetaldehyde popping up. Because in in wine, we can age, and sulfur mops that up for us. And when we're looking at these, we, we top we still top monthly, but it, it still pokes its head through. So it's like we're so, trying to. So can I ask why you guys top your barrels monthly? No. To keep it, well, because we are trying to be sort of clean so mm-hmm. they'll just be raging so you just, you're just not giving an opportunity for yeah we're not ox, oxygen acetaldehyde will be the biggest monster like that rouge de champ would just be a acetaldehyde it would just taste like bruised apple it'd mm-hmm. be gross mm-hmm. and it's got a little i mean it, and it's and there's a little bit there which we're, we're we're trying to figure that one out and with by blending we have some you know we're, we're messing around with that but it again that's one of those things we're trying to figure out too is again like how to how to do these 
Because there's the wine, you know, way of you do wine. There's a way you do beer. And how the hell are we going to bring these together? Well, because bugs, right? I mean, your your pretendomyces and, and and PDO and all these things they Just they mop trans- that they shit mop up. all that up. <laughs> but if you're trying yeah. to make a clean product, mm. and and mm. when you when you oxidize, you know, ethanol or you know you know alcohols that you have in beer, mm-hmm. you get to see lalide. So I mean that's why you know I always hear the old the old you know you think about you know you don't aerate your beer or your wort until you know if it's started fermentation all this stuff mm-hmm. well, it's only partially true obviously but but the reason why people historically say that is you don't want to oxidize your alcohols into acetaldehyde you put a clean beer in a barrel that has no bugs to mop up any 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 mm-hmm. potential no compounds. pellicle to protect it mm-hmm. yeah right like, PDO will yeah right like Scott said PDO will throw a film over the top that protects it from oxygen. If you're trying to do a clean beer, though, and you don't keep it topped, you've got an oxygen layer that's diffusing into the beer, oxidizing alcohols at acetaldehyde. But again, you've got no bugs to mop it up. In wine, you'd sulfur it, which would bind with acetaldehyde. And top and, every month. And top every month, and it's yeah. fine. So mm-hmm. with you guys right in between, you've got no real solution here except to top up these barrels. We're still oh. trying to figure it out. Or not use the barrels, because they sound like a fucking pain in the ass. They're a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> I mean, just use the, just use yeah. the grapes and uh-huh. stainless and uh-huh. begin well, get on with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that little funk, though, that little draw that, like, that Rouge brings. Like, it needs that. Otherwise, it's just too... It's like for me, rose, sparkling. Well, because we have two, like, we, that's why we do the barrel aged Pinot Grigio sparkled, because that barrel brings in a little something. Just like we do a Pinot Noir or local Pinot Noir that we sparkle. People like that probably better anyway. Hmm. We, again, we're probably making our life too difficult here. But right. I think that barrel brings in a little something. We just got to figure out the perfect balance, and we're still have trying you, to figure that out. I'm going to do a plug. I don't know the company name, so it's like a partial plug, but it's just because I saw it. I saw uh, uh, Peter Picard using it in, uh, in Colorado at his new brewery. Have you seen these kegs that are like – there are these stainless squares that you put staves in. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look! Like, did you hear the disdain <laughs> yeah. in so his in, 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 the disdain in Scott's voice? He's like, "Yeah, I saw that fucking shit." <laughs> yeah. uh, but like, because you could ha- you could adjust more. No, is that cheating? Like, this is something we've struggled with in the wine industry too. Because I mean, yeah, you've got like the chips, you've got the tank staves, you've got all the okay, other stuff. Okay. But nothing translates like a barrel okay you know it really doesn't That's and fair. maybe it's just, and, you know we've done a bunch of trials and it and some of it is a little bit romantic and i'll admit to that like but that's but, okay yeah, yeah because if you nail it then you're like see but <laughs> but at the same time it's it's still i still don't really i'm not a big fan of that stuff and i like i like the process okay. and i think that there's a i still like having a, a little bit of that, that microbe load and all that stuff that's what makes this kind of fun and interesting otherwise it's just like yeah it's too linear i don't know right you don't want to be sitting at a computer napping every three hours. You want, to, you want a little challenge at this. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's rubbed off on me, man. I get bored, too, now. Yeah. You know, I was always a, a, just a classic beer guy, man. I love milds. I love, yeah. I love bitters. I love, you know, right. others, man. Yeah. Well, like, I can't wait for those next. Oh, yeah. Woo! Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh man. We do it sounds that. like we got more to talk about, so there's a whole other show. And yeah. Next, next time, it's milds. Well, and, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Here's the styles that everybody in this room loves. We didn't bring them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we do it, man. I we loved all my, these. <laughs> my best buddy is the the brewer over at Timothy Taylor's in the UK, right? And he's they make the best mild in, in the UK. I mean, they won Champion Beer of Britain more times than any brewer in the UK. Let's wow. call him right and, now. Yeah, wow. I like the man. So when you know, I we get his, we just send over our sales guy to the UK. Well, we didn't send him. He went to the UK because he want he's young, right? And he wants to sow his oats a little bit, man. But he. Uh, you know, I set him up with a tour there, and the first thing he did when he came back is ask for a mild, man. So we brewed a, a pale mild, nice. right? Everybody knows the dark milds. Yeah. But the, the, Timothy Taylor's is champion of the pale milds, you know, the old school thing. Man, no, it's basically a British bitter with, you know, with 15 BUs in it. That sounds great. It's, uh, it's phenomenal. All Maris Otter, man, just a touch of British Crystal 30, mm-hmm. you know. And, and, and cast little, hopped. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah totally. Yep. You know, a little fuggle, little EKGs, man, it's great, but... But sufficiently screamed at yeah. and cockney as it's for <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, though, man, like who drinks it, right? I do. Like I yeah, do. Yeah. Those guys, yeah. like you know. So I would love that. <laughs> that right. damn it. So yeah, but what are we gonna, we're gonna drive four hours every week to <laughs> yes. have more? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Uh, no, it's probably what three. Yeah, it's not here? too bad actually. Uh, it's two yeah. change. No, it's two change. Under two hours. Let's go right now. And miles low alcohol. You can handle it. That's right. I could drive back. Yeah, just one. Yeah, get it for five. Yeah. Oh damn. That sounds delicious, boys. Well, yeah, gentlemen, all of these were delicious. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing it with us. Um, yeah, and sure. dropping some knowledge, too. I think we got some new tips out of you guys today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we we, we, always, we always tell too much, man. Like no, we, uh, that's cool, <laughs> though. 
Well, well, I feel like this problem is one that you, like, brewers need to solve, but you guys are the right ones to figure it out. So. Yeah. By the way, in the old days of the BN, all the brewers used to say too much. Now everyone's a little fucking tight-lipped, so it's, oh, yeah. you guys are refreshing. You guys, you guys are really refreshing. Think so? I think so. A little yeah. bit. Because oh, yeah. remember how many times bit. we always got, oh, I, that's a trade secret, I can't. And you would be like, come on, fucking tell me. No one cares. Yeah. No, I can't tell you. So, okay, I guess I haven't heard the exact phrase like, that's a trade secret. But yeah. I'm in thinking of the interviews over the over recent years and yeah. previous. Maybe, maybe I've stopped asking the right questions. <laughs> <Maybe> <laughs> to be honest with you, that could yeah, be yeah. part of it. Like, maybe we already kind of got, I didn't know how to get to the point again. Like, something okay. that was uh, uncovered. But I feel like in the early days, there maybe there was just more to share too. Maybe maybe brewers have learned so much from each other. It's all just and from us, by the way. Assumed. That that um, there's not as many new tricks. Well, we also I don't know, but like the Hefeweizen trick's not new. No, no, we also don't ask <laughs> for <laughs> recipes anymore. We just need just, right. So I think that's where we would come to loggerheads a lot of time with and get uh, brewers who go, well, I can't I can't tell you exactly right. what is in this beer when we were like asking. For right, that's shit. that we yeah. would get. I won't tell you the recipe or yeah. even maybe if, that's what I'm thinking because there every, is a tightening up and every yeah. now and then a brewer would say you know uh, there is this one little process we do I, I won't tell yeah. but I'll tell you everything else I you put know each hop up my ass <laughs> <laughs> right no one ever said that for you probably for good reason uh, but yeah so thank you for for doing for for saying uh, you didn't say too much and I appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> And then what's your now, social man, we'll security number? Uh, we're still open. Uh, yeah, you guys are going to be fine. No one wants to deal with this bullshit anyway. It's a pain right, in the ass. It is, so <laughs> it is a pain in the ass. You guys are going to be fine because the beer is good. It's very, very good. And yeah. If it wasn't, uh, then you'd be in trouble with all of your crazy antics. But the beer's good. Well, and honestly, we were talking a little bit, uh, touched on a little bit earlier, where you know you have IPA or porters or stouts or whatever, right? And you can get certain variety of those, and you can. Get get some are, that are better than others so in a way you can find oh this porter is unique because it's a little more chocolate than others but these beers I, I think are truly unique in the brewing world because right people do you know make beer with wine yeast or you know back sweeten with some some grape juice or whatever but you guys are going varietal specific and you're treating it uh, what it sounds like like a, a true beer wine hybrid not here's a beer here's a wine let's mi- let's force them together and make them breed this with is the two entirely, backgrounds to back it up yeah this is an entirely different thing yeah. and I think they're doing it a, a, a justice yeah and I agree. it's 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 probably the most unique beers that I think we've had on the show maybe ever. You know, maybe ever, certainly in a long, long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Since Teresa was on the show last, I think. there you go. Uh, right. Well, of yeah. course. Well, yes. Yeah. Let's you know right. that that aside. Yeah. Now I I have so much respect for these guys. They truly are doing something that's so unique. And when I I went to visit them, I literally just spent the whole day in the back. Watching Casey Brew, and he just brought me a beer every so often, and I was Very just nice. like floored by every single thing I've tasted. So yeah, you know these guys are my homies. They're uh, you know they're a few miles away from my brewery, so I you know I Very just nice. have all the respect in the world for them. How many beers and do I, you keep on tap? I want to know. Um, I want to how much. I'm trying to figure so out how much in, Teresa in drank general, that day. Probably, probably on average, probably fourteen. You know, yeah. anywhere between 14 and 17. I definitely had at least 14 beers. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and then drove at high speed. Yeah, then I drove the canyon home. <laughs> uh, 14, 14 beers ounces. that were four ounces each. There you okay, go. There so. you go. <laughs> Yeah, really good stuff. Uh, cool. All right, once again, everybody, go to solidgroundbrewing.com. Uh, you can find out their address so that you can go see them. And what's the town again? Diamond um, Springs, just outside of Placerville, California. There you go. Right below South Lake Tahoe. All right, maybe on my next time I'm on my way to Tahoe. Yeah, it's right on your way to South Lake. Perfect. So I can go drink with you and then go lose all my money. Perfect. Right, Gamble. It's my, Let's yeah. go. It's my M.O. Yeah. We're cheap, so. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, it sounds like it. I like your cheap wine plan. Yeah. That's very good. All right, boys. Thank you so much all for right, being thank here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if you're local to Concord, you can come down to the Hop Grenade probably for the next couple of days and try some of the spear that we've been talking about. But uh, I'd get here soon if I were you. It's going to be gone pretty quick. Uh, otherwise, go to the website, solidgroundbrewing.com, and you can find out where to find it. Uh, we're going to take ourselves a quick break. When we come back, we're talking to our old friend Dave Marley of Evovo. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. What? Yeah, he's got some kind of thing happening again. I oh, can, good. Yeah. The, the sky is always falling at that point. <laughs> yeah. Hang in there. It's the session. We'll be right back. 
This is Corey King from Side Project Brewing, and you're listening to the session on the Brewing Network. All right, welcome back to the session. Thank you so much for sticking with us tonight, and thank you so, so, so much to Solid Ground Brewing Company from Diamond Springs, California. Go to solidgroundbrewing.com and check them out. The beers were really, really uh, fantastic and unique. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more excited to see what they come up with in the in the future, even than I was about their beer right now. I, the beer is great. I, I was excited about it to try. Have something to talk about. It was so good. But I can tell the kind of trajectory that they're on is going to be fun to watch. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. Like, as they figure this stuff out that they were talking about, yeah. well, and I was that's being what I mean. Like, very genuine. Where I've, I've, haven't had, I've had beers that sort of come close to this kind of concept. We've talked about them on the show. But this is a whole new – Yeah. They've upped the, the level. This is almost like uh, IPA – oh, but here's West Coast IPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like, like that – Kind of a distance yeah. between the two. They've, they've yeah, they've got the background for it. They've got the creativity for it, and they have the uh, I don't know for lack of a better word, like uh, discipline. <laughs> the yeah, yeah. way that they're really focused on uh, numbers and how these things work together. Yeah. Well, yeah. now they have to just work on some marketing. They got to come up with a new beer style <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. exemplify uh, what that beer style is. Yeah, That's right. Uh, agreed. Try to connect with the hipsters. In the well, yeah. if we sure. get a hazy IPA beer style in four seconds, I think we can do something. With it. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. Call it hazy wine. Yeah. Shit. I love it. Fuck, dude. Sounds good. Well, speaking of people with style. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. We've got uh, Dave Marley of Vivo Vo, Vood, Vood, Vo. God damn it, Justin. Uh, from Flattail Brewing Company on the line with us. Hey, Dave, what's up, man? Well, mostly I'm trying to figure out who the fuck this Justin guy is. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? I've been here. You're like one of the new co- new co-hosts or something? <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for at least a week and a half. That's right. We, people have been asking for a female uh, voice, and we got one. <laughs> You're welcome. I know. I, I actually listened to the last show, and Teresa is already doing a better job than any of you motherfuckers. So, yeah. I mean, oh, you got to at least give her a raise to 50 cents an hour. Oh, yeah. stop it. You're going to make my head get way too big. I'll tell you, what, you, over. you know what? On Dave's uh, on Dave's request, I'm going to double your uh, your pay right now, Teresa. Uh, there you go. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> Take that glass ceiling, which is good because they pay me so in beer. She's so. on the Bevo special, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, well, Dave, what's going on in your world right what now? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we talking to you? No, no, no. But before so no, lonely. before we get to the, I know you're here. We have to promote something, but yeah, yeah. but in in real life, what's going on in your world? Are you are do you have a distributor? Are you a bankrupt? Are is Live. are you going to make it? What's yeah. happening? How's Emma doing? Do you have a gun to Emma's head? Solid question mark. No, I sold my guns, so that's you know smart. That's going to help both of those issues. Well, uh, no, we're we're doing good. Uh, there's a little bit of a <clears throat> new direction going on at Flat Tail, and I'm kind of excited about it. I love that. While yeah. I can't give you. All the details. I'll tell you what's happening right now, everybody. I can tell. I can read. I can tell. Okay. By the, They're he's, selling out. He know he's brought in a partner. Okay. I'm just. Get, by, by the way, just to be clear, I don't know, have any information. Right. <laughs> but I guess I'm going to guess, Dave. And when you're allowed to talk, you can come back and tell me. Uh, if I'm right, how but wrong I, you are? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, it's, hopefully, it's block fifteen. Have you heard? I of mean, what, yeah. What's the, the new? What's what would what would the other new direction be like? We're making you, ciders now. <laughs> yeah. We're making trail um, bikes. Well, what, what I can say is that there there is in fact some new ownership. Yeah, see. Um, yeah. However, that that new ownership transition is, is most likely going to be uh, the the same. If that makes sense. No, that um, doesn't make sense. Kind of, no. The new ownership will be the same. Yeah. Larger role at the company, um, along with my GM Kyle Davis, who is an absolutely fantastic human being, uh, has kind of taken over pub operations, and we're going to be just doing a little restructuring. Okay, oh, okay, yeah. so same people own it, but just different amounts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. Okay, cool. Let's mm-hmm. go with let's go with yeah. that. Well, Kyle is great. I'll give you that as well. I like terrible Kyle mustache. And, uh, terrible mustache. Uh, mustache. Great guy. Yeah, different one. That, that's Dave. Oh. There's yeah, two Daves? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, we're all Dave. Well, but everyone uh, has a bad mustache. Can we just agree on that? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. All sure. mustaches okay. are bad. Okay. All right, there they we go. Now all Says the guy who's sporting a mustache. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the mustache is at flat tail. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all not terrible. Not the mustaches in this room. No, no, no. The mustaches in this room are great. Especially do, you, do you guys have a distributor, Dave? 
Negative. We are 100% self-distributed in the state of Oregon right now. Okay. And is most of that happening on the back of your motorcycle? or uh, you, is it, is it... I have only delivered three tags on my bike this year. So. <laughs> this year. Wait, so you, you got out of your distribution, distribution thing or, or, that we talked about yeah, on the show? Yeah, we, okay. we did. Uh, you know, you might remember it from that four-hour show I did with you mm-hmm. last year, but, uh, you know. No. I know know. you don't pay attention to me. Uh, (laughs) That's why I asked. We actually ended up coming to an agreement with uh, Columbia. Nice. After they bought out GDI, and Columbia actually worked with us a lot better than GDI did, which was the opposite of what we thought would happen. Yeah. And then another thing I can't really discuss the details of, but I will say that Bigfoot distributing out of Eugene, uh, they're good people. Okay. <laughs> they understood that we were in a situation that didn't really fit a distribution partner, hmm. and they worked with us in a non-specific way that was absolutely fantastic. And if anyone is looking for a distributor, if you're <clears throat> above at least 2,500 barrels and more likely above 5,000, you're actually kind of looking to get into chains, that sort of thing, where a uh, distributor is appropriate – Reach out to Bigfoot because they're good people, and they're they're functioning uh, as craft beer lovers, not as yeah. franchise law enforcers. Well, oh, that's great. I like to hear that. Yeah, cool. That's that's good news out of you for a for fucking change. For a change. <laughs> yeah. I know it's weird. Should we just hang up now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually, haven't had a, a solid meal in a week, but. Bigfoot yeah. distributing good people. I, I had some freeze dried uh, beef stroganoff not too long ago. That was pretty delicious. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Dave's eating MREs oh, now. Man. The yeah. fucking Mountain surplus. Mountain. I gotta get prepped for the ride, bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dave also fixed uh, Maybelline when I was there. He was able to rip the television. Oh, really? He was able to rip the television out of it. Uh, that's fixing it? For me. Yeah, that's fixing it <laughs> uh, for me. For, uh, four years. I, I believe the question I asked was, how much of this RV can I break to get this out? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, I don't know. It's fine. Whatever. You're lucky the whole wall didn't come like with the TV. Redneck Excalibur. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did, you keep, did you keep the TV at least, Dave? <laughs> uh, so, uh, what What's going on? Uh, uh, some sort of ride. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I decided that, like, 80-hour work weeks at the brewery were just not enough. Mm-hmm. And so a few years ago, I started doing this little project of mine called the Highway to Health. So what that is, is uh, I ride from Corvallis, Oregon, to San Diego, California, in a day. And <laughs> for every mile I ride... I'm raising money from the National Brain Tumor Society. Wow. Wow. Okay. I called it his ride to sterilization. <laughs> yeah, it's a win-win, baby. Win-win. Yeah, he's, win. he's okay. like, it's just fine. Uh, okay. I love this cause. Um, didn't you, like, break your knee one year on this ride? Or something. No, but we could pretend I did. Oh, you're talking about when they tried to amputate my leg in Stockton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't this yeah. ride. They tried. Yeah, they tried. No, this was a different one. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was I was doing a training ride for the charity, um, and I long story short ish had uh, cut my knee open in a dirt bike accident a couple days earlier, and it kind of got pretty gnarly looking and uh, the local urgent care said don't worry it's just a little infection we'll give you some antibiotics no big deal you can make this ride to san diego no problem uh i made it to stockton and was kind of feeling sort of passy outy and uh yeah a little unusual for me uh not having made it the full thousand miles so i pulled over at a hotel in stockton which is lovely um (laughs) And as soon as I got my leathers off, I realized that my left knee was the size of a cantaloupe. There Uh, was uh, no small amount of bodily fluids leaking out of it. uh, And then there was this really neat, like, dark red line running from the cut to my toe. Oh, that's not, yeah, that's... That means you're pregnant. Sepsis. (laughs) That's what that means. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. It means you're having a great day. Um, So I I called my insurance company because they have a consult line, and they know me pretty well there. (laughs) uh, It's actually called the Dave line. Yeah, it's a direct line to one person. (laughs) I'm a motorcycle lodge in my school. (laughs) Um, And the nurse told me, and I quote, I don't care if you don't have your helmet on, get to your bike as fast as you can and ride to the ER because you're dying. Oh, wow, yeah. Hmm. Uh, Yeah. So 
I did that, and uh, if you've never been to the Stockton ER on a Monday <laughs> night at 9.30 p.m. <laughs> yeah, how many gunshot victims were there? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, 100% not kidding, three. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. There was also a woman who had been stabbed in the neck. Uh, there was uh, a guy, yeah, yeah. a guy sitting next to me with the most frightening rash I have ever seen in my entire life. Oh, and when I penis. went up to the counter, they're like, "Yeah, we're going to put you towards the top of the list." Uh, wow, towards, and you're like, what? Neck towards, towards, yeah. Yeah. Which also yeah. sounds I'm a lot like, like the waiting room in Beetlejuice. Right. <laughs> they take the yeah. Yeah. Much, and much. this was a Monday. Just think of what Sunday the, the or Saturday is room, like. The triage room had, like, a ripped-up leather sofa that they put me on. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the lady, doctor walks up and, like, pokes at my knee bones, hands me some more antibiotics. Three days later, in the ER in Alameda, uh, made a stop by faction on the way in to grab a quick pint. It was delicious. Um, and they admitted me, and then they were about to amputate my leg and uh, oh my because God. they thought I had MRSA. Right, And then the night before the amputation decision was supposed to be made, I couldn't sleep, so I asked for a Benadryl. Turns out it was an allergic reaction to the topical antiseptics I was using, and I was totally fine. Oh, so, uh, wow. so, but, like, I just want everybody to, to, wow. to recognize the irony that Dave is allergic to Neosporin. Yeah. Right. Actually, so <laughs> that, is, that is irony. Except all I can think of is if I'm in a hospital and I can't sleep or I can't anything, or even if I'm fine, I'm asking for some serious fucking drugs, yeah. not Benadryl. Where's my oxys, dude? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I, in other words, I would have died. I would have lost my leg. Yeah. But because uh, worse, because Dave's not but... as much of a druggy lush as I am, right. he's like, can I just have some Benadryl so I yeah. can sleep, please? It's totally safe, and you shouldn't flag me. First right. off, I brought my own supply. Okay. <laughs> Benadryl? <laughs> yeah. The, the contradiction list they handed me for the six antibiotics I was on was mildly to moderately concerning. So. Right, wow. So, uh, Malpractice. Settled for the band, Do you know like what yeah. percentage you were about getting your leg cut? It sounded like they were still making the uh, the decision, but... So, yeah, 50? they came up to me on Friday and said, well, we want to give it 24 hours before we make the big decision. Oh, my God, the and, big decision. Right, yeah. <laughs> so you were like 90% that's what, that's there. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, what's the big decision? <laughs> and he looks to just at me and kill like, well, you right now. Well, you know, I mean, you know, do, you're, you're do like, we, no. Do we like, take the leg off like at the hip, or do we like try to be conservative and take it off above the knee? Oh my god! Oh, and this, this was literally the first I had heard about any possibility of amputation. Of course. Well, well, first of all, <laughs> uh, actually, I'm fucking speechless. I'm pretty calm about this stuff. Like, I just always assume everybody else knows more than me. Yeah. I'd have lost my shit at oh, that moment. And your leg. <laughs> can, yeah. they, can they not do yeah. an allergy panel in that 24-hour waiting period? I guess they see? wouldn't have thought about it. I mean, what are you going to... So, you can't run every in test. In retrospect, I, I probably should have um, reacted a little bit more <laughs> strongly to this. Right. But, you know, I am me, and, like, this was a year after my doctor told me that I had ALS because I actually was just low on potassium. (laughs) (laughs) I can't tell if you're an idiot or all your doctors are idiots. I really don't know. You deserve each other. Hi, Dr. Nick. (laughs) I love this doctor because every time I come in, it ends up being good news like two weeks later. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, you have ALS, but you went home and ate a banana. And now you're, you're fine. fine. Yeah, better. Right. Turns out Yeah, good well, I actually waited three months for a neurologist appointment, and the guy was like, can you wait? What do you do for a living? You're, like, lifting kegs every day? Like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Wow. Go drink a Gatorade. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so this this is Dave's dedication. All of this happened on a practice run for the charity uh, that he's going to be doing. Uh, once again, uh, what is the charity called? The Dave Marley Age. Highway to Health <laughs> <laughs> Foundation. Highway to, to, highway to Health. Uh, what's the, the Highway to Health Rally. Uh-huh. Okay. What's the website? <laughs> the website Do you need me to Google it for you? www.braintumorcommunity.org slash go to slash highway to health. Or people can just Google highway to health. 
Or you can Google Brain Tumor Community Highway to Health, or you can email me, which is the easiest option, at Highway to Health Fundraiser at Gmail dot com. Dot like or <laughs> ping me at Nine Lives Moto at uh, on Instagram God. at Instagram on Instagram. How does that work? Dot One nine. of those. Is it the number nine? Geosite. It is dot. spelled out N I N E Lives Moto. Okay, Dave, you really just need to buy a fucking URL, dude. We talked to you two <laughs> months ago. Uh, the same yeah. thing. Do you, you, you want to volunteer to, some time for this charity? Maybe? Yeah, all, I, I did. Are you, are you volunteering? But you have to buy Dave Rides I mean, bike. other than this com. time that you're literally giving us now, but, you know. Hang on, I'm buying. I just, I'm doing. I'm buying you a yeah, URL. Dave right rides a fucking bike <laughs> and hopefully won't die. Dot com. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I'm buying you a fucking URL. What is that? Uh, I'll buy it first. What's the good URL name? What Dave do do? still has I'm two just, legs. Uh, yeah, Dave rides a bike or Dave... It's not MRSA.com. <laughs> Dave bike... Uh, you guys aren't helping you. This is the same things he just gave out. <laughs> I like Bikes for Rita. brains? <laughs> yeah. D- Dave's for brains? Yeah. Yeah. Dave's Mouth for brains. Beer. Uh, I like... Uh, honestly, it's Dave's leg. Dave I rides mean, a bike. There's no bad no, options no. here. <laughs> is there... What's the organization called again? Highway to Health. Highway well, to Health. I mean, here's the thing. It's not really an organization. It's a Gmail account and me emailing people asking them for money. So you That's an are, organization. are That's you a small your organization. highway to health? Yes. I am the only member and of And you it. don't have highway to health? And all donations are ran directly through the National Brain Tumor Society website as of now. I am hoping to actually become a legitimate nonprofit organization at some point, but life has kind of prevented the time that's necessary to make that happen. I don't need your so right now, when you thing. when you email me, basically, I'm directing you to the National Brain Tumor Society donation portal, which is at that really long URL I gave you, and you're making a donation directly to the NBTS. So you don't own HighwayToHealth.com. I think they make smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. They're, 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 Justin they're, might have got you one. They're enema smoothies, is what they are. Uh, well, you know what, Dave? Look, uh, .org is taken. Oh, we're working on. I'm seriously doing right. this for you right yeah. now. This is ridiculous. I'm tired of listening <laughs> to you. It's because it's because I'm sick yeah. of listening to you. Get a stupid WordPress site or something like that. You know, I'll I'll highlight it. highway I'll to health dot beer. This has been my goal the whole time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to have Justin yeah. do something for you. Leave enough long unusable URLs at you that eventually. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't you just get a new helmet out of this deal? So now it's all coming back to you finally. I did, and actually, holy shit, where is he? I've been with you the whole time. Have you been talking? No. <laughs> yeah, don't remind him, Dave. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Icon Motorsports out of Portland. I actually just rode by to see if they wanted to make a pledge or, you know, would maybe give us some social media love or something. And they end up giving me a whole tour of the factory. I met, you know, one of the board members. I met their custom bike designer. I met their graphic designer. I uh, saw them shaping clay over blank helmets for new aero designs. And then they basically said, you know, they're they're a small company owned by a big company, so they they aren't really allowed to do charitable donations, but what they can do is make sure I get where I need to go safely. So she looks at my gear and she says, yeah, you have a brand new suit, but your helmet looks old. How about a brand new helmet? And hands me a helmet. Um, they're sending a bunch of swag down to the brewery for the Highway to Health Fest. We're doing doing Corn Dallas Beer Week to raffle off. So that was that was an amazing experience. I mean, no warning. Didn't even email them. Just walked in, and they're taking care of me with gear and sending a bunch of swag down so we can raise even more money uh, this wow. summer once the ride's done and we do the fest. Well, that's cool. Yeah. How, how much did you raise last year? Last year we raised just under eleven thousand. Wow. wow. That's just you riding. Yes. You're amazing. I have invited 30 people, though. Okay. They just they just haven't showed up yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think I've been invited, too. I never Well, did. yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you, you honestly, have. listening yeah. to what happens it's on these rides, I wouldn't ride with a guy. I would ride... Actually, 20 miles so, behind him. Honestly, that's the only thing that makes me want to do the ride. <laughs> Not the only thing. I would love to help, too, but I, I love the adventure. And, and, Dave, and, and Dave's my kind of dude with all the fucking craziness. Um, I just, I don't know. You should join could, for the way back. I don't, yeah, there you go. I just, miles of I-5 is not so much adventurous well, as that's like it. just a recipe for hemorrhoids. Yeah. Um, hey, what do you think about uh, DaveRidesForLife.org? That, that's a name. <laughs> I can't. Highway to Health is gone. Um, 
There, yeah, I think Ride for Life is also gone about 30 years ago, but I do appreciate the effort. Uh, actually, Dave Rides for Life is, I'm about to buy it for you. Are you down? Yeah, you little bitch. Uh, did you check Nine Lives? Because that's one I might actually buy from you. <laughs> he doesn't know how buying URLs work. Yeah, I don't think uh, I guarantee- you go to the URL store, David. <laughs> I gar- uh, you want me to, You really want me to check out Nine Lives? Because I guarantee it's gone. You know what? I want you to do you. And I will take whatever I can get. I, David, listen, he's doing you a favor. Shut up and I'm, be honest with him. Hang on, That's right. what I'm saying. I'm going to shut up and take it. You fucking well, I don't want to. If it's, know, it's not well. good, I'm not going to, you know, hang on. Let's see. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I kind of just use the highway to health because that's what we came up with drunk at the bar one day. And then realize that, like, it's a smoothie thing and a couple other things. So the only thing is I don't but really there is necessarily no- 100% know what this is. Is going to be called. There's no highwaythehealth.com. There, it's not available. I don't understand how you say you like. So you came up with the name Highway to Health, but you didn't look at. Yeah. Okay, because that yeah, shit. No, not it, even that shit gone. How do you not get this yet? I, I don't. I'm just trying to fucking help. How about, about, how about ride the highway to health dot com or dot org? What about ride to health? Ride, ride to hell. Hell? Yeah, there ride we go. To hell. That's, that's yeah. No. To health and back. Definitely hey, take it. Some good puns now. Definitely take it. I th- I'm telling you, it's always just you. You invite 30 people, they never show up. DaveRidesForLife.org. Could you, and it just directs people. It's like an easy thing. We go, you do your whole fucking bullshit, and then we go, hey, Dave, where can people go to help? And you say, DaveRidesForLife.org. Dot fucking and that's Lycos. It. And that's it. And I can I'll, make I'll it, take it. And I'll direct it wherever you want it to go. And listen, that sounds fantastic, and I deeply and truly appreciate it. Next year, when you change it again, I'll, we'll just change it again. It's not a, it's not a thing. This sounds fantastic. I'm buying it for you. I'm going to talk to you about Ride this this week. Highway.org is available. I just upgraded your sponsorship level. <laughs> Are you also doubling my sponsorship money like I, like I did, Teresa's? <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> That's not bad. Ridethehighway.org. Uh, you guys are our top media bucks. sponsor, whether you do that or not. So. I love it. I love it. Just imagine what ki- ty- what type of website Dave is going to make at that URL. Or writingthehighway.com is available. Uh, no, but none of that says, like, health and shit. You know? Well, no, but... I think we're going down a rabbit hole here. It's I'm highway to health. We've there. been down a rabbit hole for 10 minutes. Right now, we're sticking with Dave Rides for Life. Right now. That's Dave what he's doing. Right. He's riding for life. He's sure. riding for people's lives. By the way... Tasty brain tumors. Yeah. <laughs> Very poignant. Oh, fuck me. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, my friend. Well, look, having sex with you isn't gonna help him, but he might... <laughs> so I knew you're... Tasty was going through it. I didn't realize that it was actually brain tumors. Yeah. He had some tumors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they took one out. Um, okay. and, and this is so near and dear to our heart. Yeah. Um, He's getting it encased in amber. Apparently so. Dave didn't ride good enough. No. I'm going to buy you two URLs. The other I, one is going to be... try to make it a little further. <laughs> the other one's going to be savetasty.org. God, and, you know, I would uh, honestly, and I, you know, all dick jokes aside, uh, uh, I would love to dedicate this year's ride to Tasty. Uh, let um, me talk to him about that before you do anything crazy. Yeah. He's a very proud right. guy. Um, <laughs> There's nothing crazy, yeah. just unofficially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you, brother. All right. Unofficially dedicated? <laughs> Well, he could dedicate it in well, his Well, this heart. whole thing is kind of unofficial, so. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's be real. Yeah. But now it's a little more official. Oh, got, yeah. you've got yeah. a my new my notes for this conversation are three post-it notes stuck together as I sit in my backyard on a lawn chair. So, you know, that's that's kind of just how we roll it. I well, to help. Excuse me. <laughs> Dave Rides for Life. Dave, Dave Rides for Life. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, the URL. It, well, that being said, you've raised a good amount of money, and, and I that's appreciate right. that. I think that's really cool. So we're happy to put the word out for you, yeah. and um, hopefully nothing well, bad thank happens. You so, much. so how do people uh, Do you mind if I uh, give, a, give a quick shout-out to some of our sponsors this year? Please do. i got to finish paying for your fucking URL. <laughs> First and foremost, I would like to say thank you to the Brewing Network. You can experience such wonderful shows as Brew Strong and Scott's Mixing Board Special. Um, seriously, though, thank you so much. Uh, the BN has been massive for we this, and, and I know it's just a couple call-ins and that kind of thing, but our biggest sponsor for this year and last year is actually a Brewing Network listener. Wow. And when I say biggest, I mean, like, more than any brewery, hop company, et cetera, 
for two years running, he has now donated two grand to this cause. Wow. And I haven't heard back whether he's okay with me mentioning his full name on the air, but I will say thank you so much, Ryan. I cannot believe uh, that this guy came through like he has for us. He literally just emailed me and said, hey, I heard about this on the show. I want to give you two grand, and I want to give you two grand again next year. That is so cool. And he, yeah. <laughs> but the, the- Really, really touching. Um a lot of local breweries this year came out to help us. Sky High just down the block at 50 cents a mile, which works out to about 500 bucks. Yahats on the coast. Uh, you guys had Charlie from Allegory on. He used to be the brewer over at Yahats. So thanks to uh, Nathan at Yahats. And also we have Block 15, yeah. another 50 cent uh, a mile donation. The Water Street Market, 25 cents. Brian Sarney, one of our pub locals, 25 cents a mile. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks, Dad. Also 25 cents a mile. Uh, Taco Vino in Corvallis, as of yet to <clears throat> confirm their donation, but it's going to be at least 250 bucks. so thank you, guys. That's a good spot. Boneyard Brewing out of Bend, Oregon. I know you guys have had uh, them on the show. 500 bucks. Thanks a million. Ninkasi donated. Uh, Cascade Floors with a whopping $1,000 donation. Two Towns uh, Cider House. Nectar Creek Honey Wine, both in Corvallis, also donated. Cold Fire Brewing in Eugene and Foundation Engineering in Corvallis. Um, along with our media partners, other than the Brewing Network, uh, this year we had help from both uh, Northwest Graphics, uh, Graphic Imaging and Shelton Turnbull out of Corvallis and Eugene, respect, uh, respectfully, each printed about a 1,000 flyers uh, to pass out around the community. So that was a huge help, too. I'm sorry, are you forgetting someone, David, on your media sponsors? I am. I am forgetting one of my most crucial media sponsors and someone who has touched my heart personally. Thank you to Beverly Moore and Terry. <laughs> Happy years up, Pat's podcast. Wow, you're a C-U-N-T, dude. <laughs> I love you, buddy. And thanks for having me on your show. That was awesome. And that got us a lot of, you know, early listens and everything. And I did actually have a few people email based on that. Uh, can you say that again, please? I did have a few people email me based on hearing me on the years up podcast. There we go. That's all I wanted. <laughs> So two people listen to your podcast. That's I can true. confirm that with solid math. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, man. Buying this thing is driving me fucking insane right now. I just want to say. Justin's losing his mind. Uh, I, would never, I hate when you have to like log. You know, apparently I've used this website before, and then it's a whole thing. Oh, sh- I hate whole things, dude. Got your I'm password. Like, my thing's parceled. and I know. forgot that I've ever even looked at this damn website. It's not GoDaddy? 6969. GoDaddy. <laughs> I was going to use GoDaddy, which I do know all my stuff, but um, it's more expensive. <laughs> so you and Dave are on the same intellectual level right yeah. now. That's How much learning. money are you saving, and is it worth <laughs> this <laughs> right now? <laughs> Okay, I'll figure it out when we get off the phone. There there. We go. Well, Dave, you still don't have a good oh, URL. Uh, Now's uh, my chance. Real, real quick here. Mm-hmm. Um, based on nothing that has been texted from the audio booth, I need to apologize real quick. The National Brain Tumor Society is fantastic, and they really are a big help in this process, but they also accidentally deleted my website briefly. Um, <laughs> So I actually lost all of my stored pledge information, a few other things. So before I finish, I would like to give another huge thank you to one of our largest donors, More Service. Oh! Oh! <laughs> wow. As yeah. in Samuel Moore. Service. Thank you, Sam and Beth. <laughs> That's Very much. Technically, fifty-one percent Beverly Moore wow. service. No, it's fifty-fifty. Oh, really? Yeah, we got screwed You over. gave Sam half of that company? Besides. It's the other way around. I've always yeah. wanted more service out of Bev. That's true. So it must be all Sam. Well, got you got to pay for it. <laughs> got her. I'm working with a lawyer. I'll eventually to sue me? 51%. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You might have heard of him. John. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. John. John, you can't be on both sides. It's ridiculous. All right, Dave. Hey, thanks for what you do. Uh, we will help you get the word out. I will talk to you about what we're going to do with your new, your brand new <laughs> URL, DaveRidesForLife.org. I just logged in, so I got you tonight. We'll talk about this.
God uh, bless you all. I'm going to send it to the right place to make it easy. Oh, In the meantime, seriously. can thank, you say what? God. just say once again right now where people are supposed to go? Because this show will be up by the morning. Yeah. The joke so. of the year. If you're interested in sending a donation, please email me at highwaytohealthfundraiser at gmail.com or hit me up on Instagram at nine lives moto that's spelled out N I N E lives moto on Instagram. And so it's not just a per mile. You can also donate if I had 50 bucks. Yes. Okay, good. Just make, you can also do a flat donation straight through the NBTS website. I, I appreciate anything from a dollar to all the friggin' money you got. So <laughs> nothing yeah, too good. small. Throw us five bucks. That would be absolutely awesome. Cool. There we go. And when is, does the ride itself take place? This Thursday. Oh, okay. So, and I am totally prepared. Get on it. Okay. <laughs> wow. I'm, yeah. I'm sure. So you're riding all the way to San Diego this Thursday. I think you went farther, right? Uh so my goal has always been to eventually make it to the Mexican border. Um, usually, I have about two to four solid weeks of training really hard for this. And this year, I just decided to take up a brand new nicotine habit and then drink more. God damn um, it. You so too. So I'm, I'm going to say it, it's maybe not 100% that I'm going to make it to Mexico. But, you know, I bought the It's 1954, and I just found out my kid is gay-sized bottle of aspirin, <laughs> and I'm ready to go. I tell you, man, you got you to gotta, you gotta race down and just – Tire kick the wall that they're building, which will probably be done by the time you're there, Mm -hmm. and then just head back. You know, I I find that just putting a flag that has a charity name on it and then begging forgiveness when I get pulled over is a great way to go. Wow. You know, I feel like with your life decisions that you're currently making, maybe you shouldn't go to Mexico. I feel like it would just be all bad. At the very Uh, least, you should stop going down the fucking Crosley path, my friend. (laughs) Listen, you can start listening to a new podcast. The cancer stuff is cheaper in Mexico. At least five years before my toes start going up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, apparently you just yeah. started on your lungs. So well, four years <laughs> until they start going dumb. Oh, so. oh no, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a total dirtbag. I'm a Southern Oregon redneck, so it's, it's all Chewing Copenhagen. All there we go. That's oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's worse. Enjoy your mouth cancer. How do you do that on a bike, Dumbo? You have like a filt, like a funnel. Okay, good. See, one Camelback <laughs> hydrates me. The other one is a drain. Oh, oh, throw up in my mouth right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, God. So gross. Jiminy Christmas, dude. He just opens up his visor on his helmet and spits. It's fine. Dave is too weird yeah, for their to, job. You have to be careful when you ride with him. Just don't get too close. Yeah, don't be don't be downwind from him in several areas. <laughs> on the what bike. happens if you're tailgating Disgusting. me? Uh, <laughs> get, get a big jaw on the wind. Uh, <laughs> right? yeah. All right, that's it. i got to hang up on you Go now, Go faster. Dave. I mean, come on. All right. Love you all. Thanks, Bye, brother. Good luck, man. Yeah, don't die. Later. Right. Dave. We love that kid, though. He is too retarded to die. Like, that's just it. He is yeah. Final Destination. He's right. the main character in Final Destination, every single one of them. He outdumbed it. Yeah. He outdumbed it. Yeah. yeah. Death is like, dude, you're so dumb. Uh, well, it's kind of it's kind of cool because, you know, sometimes people who fundraise are just a little too goody goody. And he's not really that. Like, no, no, he's not. He's oh, gonna, no, he's definitely not. He's going to fundraise for, for stuff, but he's not going to give up his, you know. His, his whatever it is. A little bit of, you know, living on the edge. Yeah, that's true. It's true. It's good. All right, that's Dave from Flat Tail, and um, I guess if he's doing his ride this Thursday, my URL might not help this year, but it has been purchased, and That's I right. will help a brother out next year. That's right. It's the thought, baby. <laughs> Let me get this yeah. figured out. Uh, all right, we're going to get out of here. I want to thank our guest once again, Solid Ground Brewing Company from Diamond Springs, uh, California. Go to solidgroundbrewing.com. You can check out more about them. Uh, take a look at those tap handles. It's like one, of their, head, cool, one of their header photos, and yeah. uh, they're, they're super cool. And, and the way they just come out of brick like that, that is really cool to me. Yeah. Uh, probably not easy to clean, but it looks awesome. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's form over function, you know? Uh, know. All right. Next week on the program, we're going to be broadcasting live from Russian River Brewing Company, at their new facility in Windsor, California. There's actually going to be a live sour hour done from there and then our session. It'll be the first time we're at the new brewery. Um, we are. Maybe the yeah. first time. Um, maybe the first time we've broadcast from Russian River. I know I'd done some video. Yes. No, that's not true. We did a sour hour there a couple of years ago, but uh, I thought you knew about it and opted out already. Somebody told me like you are. You weren't interested in it, and I was. I was told you weren't interested. 
I don't, I don't think so. You I told mean, me you didn't want to go. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you literally said the words. I don't, don't want to go. that. Yeah. I you also think told I did. me that, too. Uh, did I? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. look, I, I say a bunch of shit that I don't actually mean at the time. <laughs> you guys should know this by now. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go buy the pizza now. Yeah. We'll, figure it, we'll figure it out. All right. Well, look, man. Apparently, I don't want to go to that anyway. <laughs> but it's fun. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, fun. Well, most of us, maybe JP, maybe not, will be live from Russian River uh, next Monday. That's uh, right, baby. I'm looking forward to that. And, yeah, that'll um, be fun. Sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, also, don't forget to go to homebrewcon.org and get your tickets to uh, HomebrewCon. Because uh, if you come to that event, which is a lot of fun, you can also go hang out with us at BNA 14. That'll be a good time. For sure. Uh, still working on getting uh, tickets up for sale for that uh, as quickly as I can. So just pay attention to brewingnetwork.com. Save the date. Uh, that's June 29th, and um, we'll have a good time doing all that stuff. Hell yeah, bro. All right. You good, Teresa? Can we go? Are you yeah. Done? I, you know, I, I kind of sad nobody noticed. Mm. I didn't want to say Not anything. True. Oh, I know. I, know. Yeah. I, was, I was a little shy about it at first. I didn't put it on for the first segment because I'm like, oh, no. Okay. 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 All right. Well, now that you say that, I'm glad you say that because I did notice. But by the time I noticed, it was the second segment. And I was like, well, but you didn't notice at first like an idiot. No, it was like a little, I just. You I, little sneaky. I wasn't going to mm. say anything. And then I was just like, ah. Oh. Yes. So no, Teresa is wearing the the sleeveless jean jacket, which clearly you owned already. Yes. Uh, if you have to listen to the uh, I had to cut off the show. sleeves, but I had the jacket already. Oh, I see. Okay. They were kind of blowing out at the elbows anyway, so it was perfect. Wait, though. You, like, cut them and sewed them. No, no. No? It's they like, just came out clean just, like that? Came, I don't... Wow. This is like... It was meant to be a denim vest. Yeah, I agree. I think somebody sewed on the sleeves before you got them. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> listen to last week's show. You'll learn all about the, the uh, jean jacket vest, but you've got a tasty patch on it I as got well. my tasty patch. Yeah. I feel like it's a good Auburn so. look, dude. The jean... The jean vest? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm glad. You, yeah, because by the time I noticed it, I was like, well, damn, if she was wearing it the whole time. <laughs> I'm an yeah. idiot again. Well. Um, all right, JP, you ready to go? Oh, no. Uh, Twitter game. Yes. Twitter game. Oh, yeah. see, JP always reminds me, except when it's yours. Yeah, yeah right. It's weird. Uh, yeah. What was our Twitter game again today? It Beard? is? Uh, <laughs> it was trying to get the information that we're going to get doxxed with. <laughs> Ah, yes. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah. My definition. Yeah, of let's being air docked. quote that thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Wikipedia definition, not <laughs> JP's definition. Okay, yes. Look, I'm in, I'm entirely intensely online, all right? <laughs> now, before you the honest line. before you reveal them, okay. uh, do you know how many of them are real things that we've already said and how many are just things they think we've said or something? Uh, people did, I think, take your advice of saying don't make, make us feel up. real bad. Okay. <laughs> Except there is one. Okay. But don't worry, it's not about us. Okay. You and I. <laughs> It's not about you and I. Yeah, all right, so we're fine. <laughs> okay, great. We just got bad. <laughs> uh, all right, what do we have? Uh, let's see. Uh, Rev says, JP admits to liking any IPAs to everyone that comes on the show, no. but publicly says that he hates them on every broadcast. No, that'll never happen. He'll never get that. <laughs> okay, got it. Uh, see, Daniel says that JP has hair, Beardy no longer has a beard, and Justin will live the longest. Wow. Mm. That's some negative. That's yeah. some uh, wow. That would ruin. <laughs> that would ruin the BN. I feel yeah. like. I feel like Jay. I feel like you're sad about that one. <laughs> that you're living the longest. Yeah, that's. I feel like you're. you're I am a little. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little already bit, sad right? that uh, Tacey is trying to trump me on the death pool. I don't uh, like it. I feel like it's the one thing I was winning at yeah. in life. <laughs> Said the big T is word. Dying. Yeah. yeah. Now what? Now what do you have? Now what? Uh, Gregory, A R Y says. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, why Doc is really no longer allowed on the show? I don't know what that is. Why Doc why is Doc. not allowed on the show? That's oh, why say you say it like it's a, like a one word? Why Doc? why Doc? I was like, what's Why Doc? Why Doc? Yeah, it's a sorry, oh, so thing. Why Doc not is no longer allowed on the show? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then lastly, uh, Matt says, "Simple JP shirt collection." Oh, right. My shirts are great, dude. That'll dox us. Well, <laughs> I mean, shirts are great. there's been times. They are when they're not racist. Look, you, <laughs> uh, you projected that onto it. You made that into reality. <laughs> I don't think I made that I into reality. Th- you made, yeah. Uh, you know, look, I've worn it to a lot of... Since then? 
Oh, geez. No, I haven't touched it since then because I <laughs> right. feel uncomfortable about it. <clears throat> but but sometimes I, I I look at it in my drawer and I go, that's not, it's fine. What, were, Nobody will ever know. Were you ever around a black person before? Yes. In all those times, well, you were. It's only Terrence. Terrence. That's the only one that I. That's the only one that I know. And it does boggle that's my mind the that only Terrence. One that I know. <laughs> It's the only one that I that I see on a regular basis. He makes the only one. The only yeah, one. It's the There's only one. one part of the phrase that's that. Right. Oh, it's sorry. The, that's the, <laughs> the only. <laughs> but you know what I mean. The only. <laughs> yes, we do. All right, great. Oh my god. Right. Well, for the record, JP's shirt today is just uh, pink dinosaurist. Right. Oh, that's it's, Reptar. It's Reptar. Yeah, from yeah. Rugrats. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely not. <laughs> We're not racist at all. It's reptile. Yeah. Thank you. It's not offensive in any way. No, We're totally unless, unless you're a reptile. <laughs> yeah, I guess. If you look, if you're Hillary Clinton and you're a lizard person, this might be offensive for you. But I mean, even knowing Terrence, even as 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 well white as Terrence really wow. is, hmm. it does boggle my mind if you wore it in front of him and he never yes. had the. Courtesy to let you know. That's what I'm saying. And, and, Didn't and he so, text that night though, and he was yeah, like, he "Yeah, did. that's racist." Well, that's what I'm saying. Of. I don't think I it wasn't that he didn't know. First. I think he didn't have the courtesy. No, his reason was he never thought JP would wear it outside of his house. Oh, he did say that. <laughs> well, right, but still. He did say so, uh, well, that. He still is, might mention, like, hey, I just I want mean, to make sure you never wear this, this out of your house. With, this is the problem I have with Terrence, yeah. is that I feel like he's never honest. Right. And I feel like he just he doesn't want to offend anybody. About anything. Yeah, yeah. so, but, like, but then you're just not being honest with the. Like, with your friend right. who's about to walk out <laughs> and, and get shanked. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't think there's a straight man that only has a shirt for inside his house. Like I've never met. That. <laughs> right. No, I definitely don't. I don't. No, I, and look, and I've worn. Go. I've worn that shirt to the Walmart in Antioch. <laughs> If okay. You, if okay. You, you, okay. You said, find me a, a, a more uh, inappropriate place okay? where and nobody said anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a Maroon Five. Sh- it's just. A, it's just. It's because. But now that you put it out in the universe, <laughs> now you're questioning me. <laughs> now I have performance anxiety, <laughs> and now I can't wear it. It's well, re- you have so shirt you've taken performance anxiety. A good yeah. part of my life away from me. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he has a calendar marking down what he wore? How does he know he only wore that one day and went? He went to the. I don't know. It's just because I know stuff. I mean, because he knows it was racist. <laughs> right. right. That's it's right. Guilt, <laughs> well, because organized. unlike you, I I know what's on my shirt. You just put, you just put on a shirt. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, no, in his defense, nobody knows what's on well, his right. shirt. Well, right. That's oh, what I'm saying. That, that's yeah. my point, They're right? So like it's the thing. Yeah, yeah. he has swastikas all <laughs> <laughs> under his beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't know. You oh don't know. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, don't check. He's American history Y right now. Don't check it out. He's one more worse than American history. All right. Well, we've got four to vote on here. Okay, let's yes. go. <laughs> Two of them, unfortunately for JP, are about JP. That's right. <laughs> the first one is, I, I always paraphrase, you know, but uh, JP loves yeah. IPA off air. Yes. But then tells every guest and, uh, and on yeah, the show he hates them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, The second one is, um, uh, what was it? JP has hair. Yes. Beardy has no beard. And Justin lives the longest. Yes. I really like that one. You like that one? Right, Bevo's already cast her vote. Mm-hmm. Um, the real reason to why Doc's not allowed on the show anymore. Yeah. I like that one. That one's good. And finally, JP's shirt collection. Mm-hmm. And we've got one vote so well, far. So the rest of us, it. The rest of us, <laughs> the rest of us are going to have to vote here. Yeah. Okay. If it's JP loves IPA off air, raise your hand. Not that no. one. No votes. No. I'm torn between the last I two. I honestly am also. Uh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> if it's why Doc is not allowed on the show. Yeah. Uh-oh. I think that's better. Uh-oh, that's We're going to have two, a stalemate. Which yeah, means... Yeah. What did Bev vote for? She voted for uh, JP has hair, Beardy has no beard, and Justin lives the longest. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. That's which stupid. means that Teresa and Beardy just voted for JP's shirt collection. Does Bev still get two votes? Yes. Because she has right. to re-vote now between the two. Yeah, she's the tiebreaker. There you go. Oh, God. Well, there you go. There you go, Bev. And then it's definitely up. JP's shirts. What? I JP. Mean. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good job, man. All right, JP Shirt Collection is our winner for how the BN gets doxxed. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> grinds my gears, man. <laughs> you should have done this right again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Next week, it's your turn. <laughs> turn. Turn. Unless he doesn't go to Russian River. Unless you don't it's go to Russian well, River. Well, that's right. I mean, I need to figure out how to get there first. Uh, I, probably, uh, I probably can't go, to be honest with you. Right. I mean, let's be real. Well, I mean, because it would have started six. Yeah. <laughs> In in Windsor. In Windsor. So what is that? An hour and a half. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Taryn can get off work early, then I can go. But if not, I can't go. Okay. Yeah. So I'll let you know. You let us know. Yeah. That's exactly what you texted me when you said you didn't want to go. <laughs> mm, maybe. <laughs> All right, I want some pizza. It's time to go. Yeah, I got to go. This place is going to close. All right, thanks to (laughs) Solid Ground Brewing Company, and uh, we'll see you next week. JP, get us out of here, if you would, please. All right, get out of here. You get out of here. Thank you to our show sponsor, More Beer. You can get absolutely everything you need to make great beer at home by going to morebeer.com. Solid Ground Brewing, join us in the studio to talk beer, wine, and beer and wine. Check them out at solidgroundbrewing.com. Merge your love of Disneyland with your lack of engaging podcasts. Go to earsuppodcast.com as JP, Terrence, Bebo, and Taryn talk about all things Disney. Get on Twitter for some good beer inside and homebrew info. And follow Nate Smith at Nathan Homebrew, Mike McDowell at Tasty McD. Warren is stuck over at Another Beardy. JP knows Twitter is dead, so he's on Instagram at Major Jip, and you can find Bebo there as well at Beverly M. Moore. Be sure to find the Brewing Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.